All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, Boom, sir. click in the house. Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Half Faith, Show Love, Give Hope, the podcast. Today, I have artist Young Chuck. What's up, Young Chuck? What's happening, my man? How you doing? I not wait to get on here. You know yeah. how I go. I appreciate yeah, you, man, so much. Yeah. I, I, I watch everything you do. I watch all the... You know, the funny memes, mm -hmm. uh, the music videos. I just seen a fire video that you guys posted Most yesterday. Bad. And uh, you got a group called Boom Click. Boom Click, man. Yeah. yeah. B-C-O-E, you know, uh, Boom Click over everything, you feel me? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, man. I appreciate you hitting me up, you know. I wanted, I, I've always thought about having you on, you know. Man. But also, like, I want people to, you know, want to come on and, uh, I get scared sometimes to ask people. So. Hey, man, I'm just, you know, I'm glad I ain't the last person to be on here. You feel me? So, nah. you know what I mean? That's what's up, man. I'm just glad to be here, bro. You feel for me? For sure, sure. Uh, I've been asking for a minute, man. Yeah. I've been asking for a minute, I my think dog. We, we talked about it at <laughs> yeah. one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, I but we, but I still get nervous because I don't know what if you say no or I get hey. I, I feel that in my... Hey, never for Yogi, man. You know yeah. how we do it, man. Yeah, so, I appreciate you so much, yeah, and man. And a real one, man. I seen him out one night uh, at a show. I think it was CNN Mikey. Yeah. Yeah, man. And he, you know, he came up, spoke. We chopped it up. Yeah. You know, you were real. Yeah, one, I remember telling you about my podcast. Yeah. It was you and... Uh, Boom Click. Boom Click. And yes, it sir. was at... Um, at Code. Code, yeah. We chopped it up in the back little mm -hmm, thing. Yeah. I told you guys about me. You guys told me about you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah and that's that when I dope. that's when I first started hearing about you. And then after that, I started following you on, yeah. on, on, on Facebook. Okay. And okay, then that's yeah. when I noticed everything. So you you've an artist, uh you, um director. Un director, entrepreneur, yeah, CEO, CEO. Uh you've done all kinds of producer, engineer, yeah, uh booking agent. Travel manager. <laughs> yeah. I've been it all, man, yeah, at one yeah. point. You know, right now, uh, I'm just trying to stay busy, man. Yeah. You know, I've been doing it 25 years, bro. 25 years. Yeah. Okay, so you're an OG here in Toledo. Yeah, I'm an OG, but I'm a young OG. Yeah, you all look young. All the OGs time. older than me. Yeah. You feel me? All the guys I came up, my mentors like Juan, Stink Bomb, Clemmy, uh, shit, Chief Alone. I mean, it, 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 Ray Stone, the list goes deep. I, we can even go back, Goozy. Uh, the All Out Boys, Tracy the Rare Breed, EB, uh, Gutter Dave. Mm. A lot of these guys are was my mentor towards early. Frank Wright, out of all of them, I can't leave him out. Frank yeah. Wright was like, bro, Frank Wright put out all the classics. Like, Here in Toledo? Oh, yeah. He oh, put yeah. out Ray Stone, put out the Hollow Boys. He put out uh, Sir Versatile. Uh, yeah, he, he he's made a lot of a noise, you know what I mean? He helped, he had involvement with Stink Bomb. This is all local stuff, y'all. Yeah. So the, you know, worldwide won't know about this, but yeah. this is all local in the, Toledo. In the city, man, yeah, yeah. no, uh, he had a big contribution to the city and I'm I'm fruit from his tree. Yeah. You know, but so, that was a blessing when um when I even got on with him. Yeah. You know, and that was my start. It was almost like a a university being with him. I, I was around all the guys that was on the radio. Uh, D Roller at the time, boy, quit lying. He had oh, a hit yeah, back yeah. in the day. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Uh, I'm around these guys. I'm just watching, just soaking it in, learning how to engineer. Uh, oh, so when we go out, we gotta all wear shirts and have the the sign with the name on there, and everybody gotta be dedicated on this one artist. Mm. When I learned all that, I said, "Oh, I can do this by myself." Yeah, you feel me? And that's how we learned how to do it. I just incorporated the hood into what I was doing, and made them believe that we was gonna achieve greatness. And, and here we are. Yeah, doing a lot. We a lot of my dudes got good jobs now. Yeah, because of this music. Game. And then you, uh, you were like in in the game. Like you were rapping, being on the radio. I remember like songs on the radio from you mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Multiple songs, multiple uh, records. I never hit a so fly level because I've always been like, I was like the the outcast. Mm -hmm. I would always say that. But Frank, he believed in me at an early age. I was like eighteen back then. He believed in me, like, yo, this dude, I just, he's just special. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, it's almost like a fraternity in every city. You got to get it accepted before they be like, oh, he's special. Yeah. He's been special the whole time. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But you know how I go. Uh, you got to grind it away. Yeah, up. you got to grind. But once I once I got over that hurdle, man, um, 
Man, it's been off to the races, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, nothing but success. I don't have to have a hit, hit, hit record. My record could be minor success, but it'll go further than a hit record mm -hmm. because the, the following behind it. You know, uh, my yeah. records changed lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the type of music I like to make. Uh, a lot of my popular records will probably be club records. Yeah. You know, because that's, you know, you got to, um, even the labels like, I hate to say this so early, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, the labels, they even they'll even pay you more to um to rap more so uh a fifth and sixth grade education mm. level mindset yeah. versus what you really wanna say. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You really wanna say this and that, but you can't because it's hard for everybody to comprehend. You gotta be able to make like radio music. So those records might get overlooked. The, the best records get overlooked because of those records. Mm. But you got to do that because this is a business. Yeah. Because you, know? you might have a one, like, big hit. Man. But then it only goes so far. Yeah. But it, if you're, like, a good group, you can last forever, and your fan base will follow you that, for a long time. And that's what we try to do is make timeless music. But, see, but you, even when you're making timeless music, you even Kendrick had to make We Not, um, not Like Us. Mm. That's like his biggest record because yeah. it's the beat. You know, everything sound good. You can jam to it. You can repeat the song. It's really, if you listen to Kendrick, that's not even his style. Like, he he made, he made dumbed it down completely to where kids can sing it. Mm -hmm. And it's his biggest hit of his career. Yeah, you know who else? Ludacris. He's good with that. Ludacris. Remember, Ludacris was a DJ host. He, he heard what was big, and then he started making music where it would, like, Mm -hmm. It sounded like it was just like kind of like it wasn't like that hardcore rap. Right. It was more of a radio theme, mm -hmm. and he had his music all over the place. And he had he was exposed to Atlanta because he was living in Atlanta at the time. Yeah. So you know he he we the world wasn't really hip because we had Outkast, Goody Mob, cats right, like yeah, that. Yeah. We weren't really hip to Atlanta like that. But he he was the first sound of Atlanta that just blew me back. Like wow, yeah. this dude's different. You know, Ludacris I mean? was different, bro. Yeah, for sure. Like people make fun of him now and shit because he did all his movies and shit. Man, but shit, yeah. man, he made he made like ten million in a movie, bro. bro. His blueprint or is more. what I wanted to do. That's why I do it on the underground tip yeah. now. You know, yeah. So you've been in movies and shows and stuff like that too. I've been in. I've had parts that you be like, hey. That's me right there, bro. Hey, man, rewind it, bro. You yeah. ain't see it. I've been yeah. in stuff like that, okay. you know, the small short <laughs> yeah, films yeah, yeah. and that's stuff. Funny, you know, that's but good. I'm trying to get um well you I said did, rewind it, rewind. That's funny, bro. <laughs> you feel me? I did do a uh, part for Fast and Furious. Oh, you did? Six or seven in Cleveland. Yeah. Uh but I didn't see me in it. But yeah. I was like there all day. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Yeah, yeah. My wife did that at the, at the Hollywood Casino. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I was supposed was to be at to be that too, y'all. Yeah, yeah I didn't go. Went. They paid her good too, bro. Like, yeah, they pay good. They they pay good, but it's not a good enough to do it for a living. Oh yeah, no. yeah. Because uh, they tried to get me on tails, but they ended up putting my homeboy on there, and you know, we looking in the background to find him. So you know yeah. how it go. But yeah, they'll pay you though. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll pay, pay you, you though. Pay. Since this is the first time here and the first time, like I want to know, like where I want to know, how did you become the person that I'm sitting across right now? You know, like tell me your like where you grew up at. How did you grow up? You know what I'm saying? If you and if any time that I you know have a question, I just butt in or something and ask a question. Okay. What part of town are you from? You from Toledo? Okay. Yeah, I'm from Toledo, but so so I'm I'm from the Planet Rock era. So let this that's the beginning, the eighties. Okay. You feel me? Not, uh way before the Clinton crime bill in ninety four. You okay. feel me? So my shit my stuff was messed up way before then. Okay. You feel me? So I have what most kids would have had a story as a in in the early nineties, you know. Uh uh I was what you call a at risk youth. So my mama was too young to have me. My dad was a my papa was a Rolling Stone. Mm, you feel me? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. uh Yeah. Did grandma raise you? Your grandma, grandma, grand, my grandparents adopted me. Uh, but I was always intrigued with the thug niggas, with uh, the drug okay. dealers. I was <laughs> always intrigued with the gangsters, you feel me? Yeah. So, you know, grandma and grandpa, they tried. You know, they had a peach tree. They had a pool in the backyard. They had a swing set. We had a pool in the in the basement, a pool table. Yeah. Uh, the, the clothes was clean. Uh, but I was always enthused with my friends stealing. See, they would always steal, and they was victorious at it, but I always get caught. See, these niggas, 
You know, these are the type of guys that later on in life you had to, you know, put some shoes on so we can go to the club, kick them some money so we can get in the club. You know, brothers that you try, you don't want to let go, but you still hold on to because they're your brothers. Yeah, yeah, for You sure. feel me? But at the, at a, at a, as a lesson, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you know, they was good at shooting their gun and um, not getting caught. I got caught with mine in school. Oh, so I ended man. up doing a year. Uh, I ended how up. Was getting, it? How old were you there? Bro, I was like nine. Nine. Yeah, okay. like like I said, at risk youth. So you started so, young. So I started very young. Mm -hmm. Uh, after that, uh, well, at what I say at nine. So at, yeah. after that, I went to a boys' home, and that really was another university that really made me the man I am today. You feel me? Because mm -hmm. I was introduced to criminal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, at but the at boys the same. Group? Well, yeah, at the boys' home, but it was the streets because the boys' home, they didn't care if you was out. Oh. You just had to come in at a certain time. Okay. So it was way worse. And you in there with other troubled youth yeah, yeah. that's going through problems. Teaching you stuff. I'm in there with boys that's been molested. I'm in there with boys that that, that have an addiction to selling drugs. I, yeah. I'm I'm in there with gangsters. Yeah, criminals. And yeah. It's, everything. It's, like it's a, it's a melting pot of a bunch of trouble. Yeah. So, uh, which there, you know... Uh, I was introduced to the thug life, you know, the hate you give little infants fucks everybody, you know, mm. while still being truly humble under God. Mm. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> and then a lot of folks created me to be what we call nigga, you know, one of the last of the niggas, you know, never ignorant getting goals accomplished. You get what I'm saying? You mm. add a little pimp into that, proper instructions motivate people. You mm. feel me? And then you can elevate and, and put your game into it and teach game so people can reciprocate your game. God is above my emotions. Damn. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's that, that, that I, that's the class I'm from. You feel me? So, yeah, yeah. man. So uh, that's when you grew up. It was like you was around a bunch of like. It was it was structured. Like you said earlier, like how your family used to have bro and bro yeah, used to do that. Everything yeah. used to be structured back in the day. Yeah. Now these kids, they running around going crazy. You yeah, know what they I mean? Do, they, 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 they don't the women, the shit. women, they out here. Every status you look at, they showing their ass. They yeah. bent over. They, they, they identity is damn near a prostitute nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? These girls looking for donations and a, a C three P O one loan. God damn it! <laughs> These motherfuckers. You see what I'm saying? I'm from the old school where you know, mama. Uh, you know she. Put the she, hey, down. put this down for Miss Marple across town. You know yeah. what I mean? Give her this pie. You yeah. know, we everybody helped each other in the neighborhood. Man. If you if hey, the, the the neighbor could spank you. Yeah. And bring you home, you got another spanking. Yeah. So we I'm from a different time, but I just look young and I'm, you know. But the thing is though, uh, I hate to say it though, no homo, but I had that grown man dick at in the third grade. <laughs> so when you know, I'm just keeping it real. The girls used to catch me pissing, and they said, "We not gonna call you Chucky no more. We gonna call you Chuck." And then the big homies put Young on it. Yeah. And that's how I got Young Chuck. Young Chuck. Yeah, that's man. Funny. Yeah, no, for real. For real, that's crazy. Yeah. So then, then you probably so what? Do you, so you started uh, messing with girls young? No, nah, well, you know, when you're young, you didn't care to pull it out when yeah. you pee, <laughs> and they used to see it like, "Woo!" <laughs> I swear to God, grown women be like, "Hey." Yeah. Hey, hey, no, you can't do that no more because yeah. you know what I mean. Because I was developed early, yeah. so that's what I used to be, little Chucky. They said we can't call you Chuck no more. I just uh. vividly remember that <laughs> we can't call you Chucky no more. Yeah. We gotta call you Chuck. Chuck. So that's how like, I ain't grown yeah. man down there. Yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but so no, funny. Uh, yeah. Back in my day, man, you can pay a uh, crackhead couple, you know, about twenty, thirty dollars. You get a couple good pumps in there, or some heat. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. That's just yeah. how it used to be back in my day. Yeah. Us young niggas was preying on y'all crackhead yeah. women because before the transition period, when they still cute, but they going down yeah, here. Yeah, You know what I mean? I'm the young <laughs> nigga, bro. <laughs> so we was the, hey, yeah, back yeah, then. They yeah, they just, we was, they just started yeah. their, their, their hey, addiction. Listen, we was humping back. Oh, you mm -hmm. asked me, what did I lose it early? Yeah, we was humping. Young, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they still do that when you see about uh, one girl going in the bushes and there's five boys behind her. Oh my god, you come on, man. That, we used to do that I mean, too. That kind of, yeah, she yeah, wake yeah. up with the grass, you she come home with grass in the back of her hair and shit. Yeah, we didn't care when we were younger. Oh um, man, it was different. It's like the it's like I don't know if this stuff changed or just this just 
They're trying to take testosterone out of kids. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I'm taking it out of my son, too, because, I, hey, I'd be highly disappointed if a girl ever do him wrong because yeah, yeah, I yeah. taught him how to be real sorry, yeah, yeah. very sorry. Don't ever, ever, <laughs> ever, man. Boy, you need a girl that when you leave her, she beg you to stay. Mm. So if you ain't getting that, homie, don't even, don't even sweat to get your money. My son going to be changing um, – Jet fuel when he when he graduate he graduate next year he gonna be making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a Damn. year you can't beat that son and you gonna sweep me and your money your first year yeah yeah man fuck them hoes nigga yeah fuck that no no yeah. no you know no this can you cuss on here yeah yeah you can do whatever you want it's YouTube yeah okay yeah great. you can say so, whatever you want yeah so uh yeah I'm a very spiritual person as well you know oh, I got real? Christ in my life but I've been at it at the point lately I don't wanna uh. Learn God through a man. Mm. You feel me? Because yeah, yeah. A, a pastor told me, hey, uh, God said this. Well, how he know to tell you that and ain't told me that and mm. I've been speaking to him? Yeah. So, so I, you know what? I, a lot of people just be on some bullshit. Just and, and, and another thing, like in the church, when you see the one woman fall out mm -hmm. and she pass out, she be the one sleeping with the deacon. <laughs> um, y'all didn't seen it, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, yeah, bro. Yeah, you feel me? So I it. so I like to remove myself from the the house sometimes, and I do my church at home. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, firm believer of God. No, yeah. He died for our sins. Yeah, and the Bible says when um when two people or more are in the Word, um, God is with you. So even if you was like say you and your girl just read the Bible, that's church. That's church. It's like yeah, community. Yeah. It's you and her yeah. with God. Church is in the home you know what I'm saying? And you, where it's getting repeated at. And they say you can always have a prayer closet where it's you, where you just walk in mm -hmm. and talk to God mm -hmm. for your own. And uh that's you know what I'm saying? You can do what you can do it however you want to. Uh Jesus Christ just wants you to be like about him. Yeah, about him. A, a firm believer. And I yeah. and man, I put God first. I uh I got only fear God on me somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember, but it's on my body somewhere. See, yeah. I, I like to be professional, y'all, so y'all don't see the tattoos. But yeah. under all this is like some prison tat shit yeah. going on. You know what I mean? But I'm walking in redemption. That's yeah. why uh, them kids that was, man, I had some kids in my neighborhood. They weren't bothering nobody. Mm -hmm. They was minding their own business, and I called the police on them. For real? Yeah, because I'm walking in redemption, homie. Oh. Yeah, I know what exactly what they about to do. They about to steal something out of somebody's yard. Homie. Oh, so you felt like some type of way. Yeah, in my yard, man, in my neighborhood, oh, I got a white yard. neighborhood, yeah, homie. Yeah. Real, real white. When I yeah. see three niggas in a Cadillac <laughs> coming in my neighborhood, yeah. that alarms me, homie. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm walking in redemption. I ain't on that side no more. I'm not gang gang no more. I'm yeah. game game now. Oh, game you feel me? I'm a game stir, not a gang stir. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, I called the police on that. One of them niggas went to jail. Yeah, but it's all good. He had tickets, yeah, so yeah. you know he he clean it up. Yeah, but yeah, my um, uh, like I said, I be telling him this story all the time. My marine, my marine neighbor, he high fired me for it. He was happy. We we police our neighborhood like yeah. George Zimmerman did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know what can happen, and what are they there for? Are they staking you out? Are they trying to play with you? You never know nowadays. We <laughs> hey, don't know what's going on. Hey, listen, bro. Y'all stay out of my neighborhood. Y'all better not come back fucking with me. I yeah. got a lot of guns. Yeah. A lot of guns. And your next-door neighbor's and, a Marine. Yeah, listen. Yeah, he a Marine, too. Yeah, he yeah. can't wait to scope He got mad guns. Hey, I'll tell you another story. Another time, uh, I had a studio session. Dude got mad because he couldn't rap. Mm -hmm. And my my Marine buddy came out with his 4-5. Dude yeah. jumped in the car acting like he was grabbing the gun. My my Marine buddy, he pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Dude jumped in the car and really left. Yeah. But it, I was on probation at the time. I couldn't have no police contact. So like them cats in the Starbucks a couple years back, and the police came. They got that would have got me sent up road, bro. Mm. You feel me? I had a felonious assault. So that that I didn't deserve because there wasn't no castle law at the time. Mm. Now we got a castle law in Ohio. At the time we didn't have one. I mean, there was no self defense law. Now we got one. Oh, okay. At the time, homie, somebody like broke, Florida type shit. Bro, Florida you can kill anybody. <laughs> man, that's a stand your ground state, yeah, but over here, and it's an at will state, so oh, they can this fire like you this there like, for a part in your head. Was it like that here before? Never. Oh no, bro, we got what we we well, what's uh, what stand you your ground a more uh, uh, conservative state. Oh, uh, what's so, stand your ground? Isn't that uh, that's like the Florida one, right? Yeah, that's stand your ground. Oh, they there. got that in Texas too. Yeah, uh, they can gun you down for a parking spot. Yeah. 
I've seen people go get done at 7-Eleven. Yeah. Like, I'm, you know how sometimes yeah. you're watching TikTok or Facebook or something? Better know. That's why they did Fulio Coolio oh, like man. they did him. Had him Dude. up in there. Yeah, they did him bad. Bro, you you heard about Julio Fulio? Man, listen, homie. <laughs> Who want to die like that? Damn. <laughs> Come on, bro. He was this, and that's that's what happens, dude, when you play with the devil's things. Like, even if it wasn't him murdering them, he's over here rapping about them. He's making videos on their grave. He's rapping about their gang. Gang, gang. Like, damn, bro. And that's enticing the children to be gang, gang. And you might be a good boy trying to go to school and do right. Mama got you on a good path. You see Jesus Christ in your house, Martin Luther King on the other side of the wall. You might be a well-to-do child. Right, <clears throat> but you got to go to school in whatever district that is. There go the gang. Yeah. Then if you say I will beat your ass to one of these niggas, they say I'm gonna go get my gang. Mm-hmm. That mean it's more y'all. Yeah. And the gang ain't never did nothing, but you see this to see, and this is like how I do. I patrol my neighborhood. So if you got a drug house in my neighborhood, I do everything I can to get rid of you. Mm. But if you if you helping with the the kids in the neighborhood, you buying bikes on Christmas, and you you know you doing things, then I will let you do it. Mm. But you can't do it in my own, in our area, and mm. you ain't giving back. You got to give back. Yeah, yeah. I think that because that's how the Panthers used to do it back in the day. If you police your neighborhood, there'll never be no crime. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. we let it happen in our own neighborhoods. Yeah. If yeah. we see something bad, we should either, we should go over there and stop it. Hey, man. But no, everybody turned into blind cheek. Well, yeah. back in the day, it used to be no women and children. Now they shooting at everybody, hitting hitting the wrong targets. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? It's too much. It's too much murder music. You feel me? Like I said though earlier in this, they mm. tell you they pay you more to dumb it down. To dumb it down. And try to feed it to what you say, fifth and sixth graders. Man, listen. So they want you to get that young mind and manipulate they, it. You got to like, get them early. I had another interview where they they touched this topic right, and like sexy red. Trust me, brother. We are black folks, but we don't condone a lot of this shit. Mm. It just be the shit they force down our our youth's throat. That's why I was an adolescent when I was young. See, I used to be into what Tupac. I used to be into DMX. Master P, C Murder, Snoop Dogg, uh, Eminem. You should say this is <laughs> what we too. come up to. <laughs> Listen, bro, that's what we came up to. Yeah, me too. And this shit was the best shit in the world. Too short, too easy short. E. See, easy. Dude, e. when I first, I, I listened to all that shit. Hey, look, Easy E. I had to go back and listen to him later. Yeah, yeah. He was a little old. bit before my time, yeah. but Pac, All Eyes on Me, was the first album I ever bought. Oh, man. Changed my life, homie. That's how. Uh, the stuff he said on Machiavelli. It's playing out today with Diddy and all the, the controversy mm-hmm. that's going on. Yeah, man. Yeah, Machiavelli. Tupac but, was the real. He was real. He was real. He was real uh, iconic. And in this city, I'm iconic, y'all. Mm. Like, I'm one of the most pulverizing and controversial figures in Toledo. I uh, my I survived the house shooting. Uh, my house been shot up, and a nigga shot at me three times in one day, and I ain't get hit. Damn. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, and I can read out loud and spell out loud. These diggers can't even do that, man. Trying to take a nigga <laughs> from his kids, but I got a lot going. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. So you got you you've been through some shit. I've been through a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, bro, where where do I start? Like I said, it was fucked up from the beginning, homie. Yeah, but we were <clears throat> we were talking about what time? At what age did we stop talking about your your? Because you got a lot of shit to talk about. I'm trying to speed through it. I don't know yeah. how much time we no, got. No, no. Okay, so let's go back to the story. Because we, we took off and like, okay, so now you're telling me you've been through some shit. Oh, yeah. So, okay, you were what, nine? You started uh, you started messing with girls. Yeah. And then where were we going from there? I will not at shit. Uh, I don't think nine I was messing with girls. No, no, no. You, like, you said 12, little, about 12. Older. When I, I got the scoop, I, yeah, we was messing with girls, man. So what? So I was, hey, Christine, I was sneaking girls in your house. Yeah, I was. Yeah. My brother, he the only one to know that. So <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So what? So what? What junior high did you go? Okay, so that was elementary. At junior high, probably age. Okay. What high school did you go to? So, so I went to Libby and Life Skills. By mm. by high school, I I had a child. Oh. I didn't have a child yet. I actually had one when I was eighteen with my mm. um. That's my oldest child. You feel me? So, yeah. uh, 
I kind of dro- I dropped out, you know what I mean? Mm. Which I had no problem with. I was going to pursue music. Yeah. And I yeah. dropped out too. So I think right. I made like, the right decision. We all dropped out probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in them days, man, it was it was more like I'm on the block, bro. Yeah, you yeah. You feel me? That's where the money was at. Uh, a lot of people was in there banging them books. I had to bang that pot so I can feed my, my siblings and my yeah. cousins and stuff. Yeah. You know, and, so. And then when did music start? Music started when I was like 14. My grandfather bought me a, a, a Casio keyboard, but this was like different. It had subwoofers on there. You can make beats on there, and they, they was coming out crispy. Oh. Like So I was like, man, I was already a producer before I was a rapper. I, I was lightweight good at it. Uh, so And plus, you got to remember, like, back in them days, man, you, I always was a pretty boy that could fight good. Uh so you know, I and I after I beat a nigga up, I taunt him. So and so so I was really like that when I was younger. Like you know, I didn't chill out a lot. Uh, but so with that, I was popular. Mm. You feel me? Everybody knew my name to be Chucky mm-hmm. and, and Chuck. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. So I was just like, man, why don't I just rap? Cause I would instantly blow up. Mm-hmm. You feel was me? social media already out no. at that time. Bro, this is all before but, social but media. But if you really, if you really want to be honest, I was the first social media kid in Toledo, homie. And I don't know, I really can't clarify nobody else. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, there was a lot of people before. Like you me. jumped on it right in the beginning. Yeah, and the We era. we came to the age where we seen that no social media to the day that it's that it started. Homie, we was booming was like CDs. MySpace. We was booming CDs. Randy downtown at Everlasting Designs. Boy, we used to have him booming out like a thousand a week. Damn. The posters and everything, bro. I remember booming so many CDs. We'll go to a different town and we'll try to give it to somebody. It's like, like I got this already, bro. I went to a party in on <laughs> um on the east side of Toledo, and they was like, "Yeah, we got this CD, bro. We yeah. got it up there." I looked to see if there was bluffing, bro. It was yeah. right there, bro. Yeah. Like I like, bro. All races fuck with me: black, white, Mexican. Like, most of my fans are white. Mm. This shit's crazy. You know, brothers don't really. Buy your shit. They they gonna rip it. Yeah. They gonna they gonna get it off somebody or steal it from somebody. You know yeah. what I mean? But but the 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 others, everybody else, man, they support a hundred percent, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I like music that uplifts and all that stuff. Like, yeah. not all music has to be like gangster, gangster no, rap. No, because you know you you give it a more brighter perspective where more people can actually listen to it yeah like see and i'm from like like i said the spiritual stuff so i came up in the church Mm -hmm. i when i was when i was getting in a lot of trouble i had this woman bless her 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 heart miss bond Mm -hmm. i love you so much she had passed away but uh she used to keep my man boy i used to look through the window be hiding like dang she trying to take me to church dang grandma tell her i ain't here you know what i mean but she used to make me come to church every day they was trying to save my soul the the, uh Mm -hmm. the uh pastor told me hey man uh i don't know what you're going through outside of here but i i feel like the devil and and god is fighting over your soul that scared me Scared me because uh, yeah. I was playing a goody two shoes in there, but I was smoking weed, you no, know, all types of stuff. I was yeah. church, you feel me? But that woke me up, though. You feel me? Uh, so that's where my style of music comes from. The church, uh, remember Joe to C and all them, mm-hmm. uh, one twelve, yeah, Jagged Edge, Alicia Keys, yeah, Whitney Houston, like Mariah ch- Carey. Church. They all came out through the, the church. church uh-huh. That's why the music ain't. Got no impact no more. Ain't nobody coming out to church no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, like, you you might hear uh, Slick Rick and Humpty, they they talk through the nose, you know what I mean? Mm. Don't you dare laugh. You feel me? Like Biggie, he talked through the throat. Huh, you know, mm. huh, baby, baby. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like more pock spirited. Like, I'm like Martin Luther King. I don't know how we going to overcome this. But somehow we'll get past this mountain. <laughs> so I like to shout with my yeah. words so they get felt better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of people don't have no charisma, don't have no style, but they just writing because they want to rap. I don't think it's really an art to them. It's more like popularity views mm. and trying to fit in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not an art form no more. Prince was an artist. Yeah. Pac was an artist. Mike was an artist. Whitney was an artist. Like these are artists. Like you can even go to the rap side. JD, Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Shout out to Puff, man. He was a hell of a producer. Mm-hmm. I don't care what niggas do in their personal life, but <laughs> yeah, hell of yeah. a producer. He could put two people on a track that didn't like each other and have Biggie dissing him on the song and still make it a hit. Damn. Shout out to Flavor and Year. Yeah, that was a diss to Craig Mack, y'all. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it, P. Diddy did some crazy shit, but I mean, that shit is all like. Hey, listen, I don't <sighs> condone hitting no woman. Yeah. But I done seen a lot of my homeboys do. They women like Diddy did Cassie. Yeah. We all got that homeboy that, that you might have to turn your head on, homie. Yeah. Because it'd be like, you know, come on, bro. Yeah, you, 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 and then when look, look, you ever try to stop one of your friends and they both turn on you? Yeah. Like, no. The, yeah. You know what I mean? They both turning on me. I'm going to hold on. They, you know what I mean? Yeah, Diddy did some. He had like all that oil. He had 100 bottles of oil. He has all these tapes, I guess, or whatever. So I mean, we got to see what happens at the end. Yeah, we do because we we don't know, man. Like you know, when the, the thing is, you got to live pretty good because when the FBI yeah. comes, you know that we, yeah. we think we're free, right? Yeah, I thought I was free one day, <clears throat> and the FBI came to my house. Was like, hey man, you was selling drugs? And I was like, hey man, Damn, bro, I did that four years ago. Yeah, but we got you on record, baby. So yeah. like, if they really want you, we're not free, bro. Yeah, I posted a status one day. I said if uh. If they came for Diddy and R. Kelly, I know I'm next. Yeah. Uh, people was talking about boys and stuff on there. Like, yeah. come on, homie, you yeah. know me better than that. <laughs> oh, that's but, fucked up. But you know, uh, I didn't. I got a record, a record out here. I've been young Chuck a long time. I get to yeah. end, you know. But like I always tell people, I'm trying to, I'm trying to walk in redemption now. I got a, yeah. a girl, you know. I've been with for four years. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, so I'm, I'm more about family now. Not, not. Sleeping with every girl. Yeah. I'm more about family now and getting the kids and being a father. Yeah. But I used to get it in. Though. Yeah, because so, you was an artist and you was yeah, out here. I was out I, here. Yeah, you know I'm I saying. Was out like, here. I was out here. Yeah, it's bro. not like you you didn't even have to go after no girls. Girls were just like throwing themselves to you. Yeah, at first it wasn't like that. But oh, once yeah. you get that that record that blood that go yeah. and your face is known. They just sleep with you, just or just want to be with you, or you'll have to turn it down. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I, I fell out with a lot of women because I didn't want to sleep with them. Yeah, lady, chill out. Yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes I be scared to reply back, just because I don't want to fall out with you because I might not want to sleep with you. Yeah, for so, sure. So you know what I mean. So now I don't have to worry about that. Just like Diddy, uh, I'm done talking about Diddy, y'all. But if he was married, he wouldn't have had to go through. Of this. course, that's another thing that I try to tell people. Like, if you really read the Bible, the Bible wants you to get married, have a good marriage, have a good family. Because if you're married with a woman and she's married with you, you know what I'm saying? You guys have a bond. You create a family. That's a bond. That's why broken marriages like ruin. Like, not only they don't ruin just the kid. They ruin like the woman, the man, for because then you got to I mean, build a new. It person. take a it take a village to raise a child. Homie. Yeah, uh, the the relationship has to have a tail and it has to have a head. Every house has a front and a back door. I mm-hmm. mean, nobody want to play their role anymore. And because, like I mentioned, the the ninety four clean crime bill before that, my stuff was messed up. But I seen a lot of people that got affected from it mm-hmm. when they took the fathers out the homes. So. Uh, and that might affect certain communities more than others. But look at us now. Mm-hmm. I seen uh Clinton. He actually spoke on that. They said, "What do you think? What do you think about that? You see what it did?" And he mm-hmm. admitted, "Yeah, it, it 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 dramatically affected us. But we tried to fix one problem and we created another. Yeah. So at least they take an accountability. But now that we all know what's going on, we have to reverse the cycle. But it looks like the cycle ain't getting reversed. And I'm talking about two parent coops." Mm-hmm. You know, have a, a home with two parents in it. Did you have your father growing no, up? No, hell no, no. I didn't have my father growing no. up. Just like I said, it's a uh it's a normal cycle back in them days, kind of. Yeah. Uh my grandfather used to say, uh, it was a point of time where let's say it was fifteen homes in the neighborhood. There'd be fourteen with a man in the house. That one percent mm-hmm. with no man. And everybody would patrol like help help mm-hmm. that woman. That's amazing. You know what I mean? That's that's how that's how Good, well-to-do neighborhoods were. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if and kids, then it flipped, right? If kids came up, well, crack. Yeah, crack. Once did crack it, came out, it flipped everything. It made it more everything more. I'm not helping them. Oh no, get away. Yeah. Oh no, I can't trust them. Hey, girl, don't let don't pick them up. You know, because you used to get hitchhiked. 
can't do that no more. Yeah, yeah, Nobody's yeah. picking you up. And then there's only time. like two dads to them for the other, oh, yeah. the other, the other, you know, 14 dad or whatever. Let's say, let's say, what'd you say? 15 dads, right? Mm-hmm. By, by the time crack came out, there was only two dads at home. Mm-hmm. And then the other uh, 12 families had no dads, no dads, single moms. No dads. So if mama and got two dads a- were trying to coach the, the team and, and trying to do whatever, but also trying to hustle and make money. And this is the it's thug crazy. life era. This is the era I come from. So the real, the truth of it is mama got to work. Mama got to get pleased. Mama got to have her rest. Mama want to play. She want to kick it with the girls. Mm-hmm. Mama got a life too. So what's son doing? Thugging. Mm-hmm. Thugging. Yeah, there was nothing else for us. Nothing today. else for him. That's to why do. I hit the streets. Who, who's too. his father? The streets. Yeah, because our dads were jail. My was dad was gone. in jail. Product My of dad the environment. was locked up seventeen years. What? See? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, y'all. So and, like, so so. And what had, was that? What was that for? Do you have you ever spoken yeah, on see, that? Yeah, my dad. He's he was selling uh, cocaine. My dad was selling cocaine in a school zone in Massachusetts. And what year was this? Uh, I was 16, so he went to jail when I was 16 years old, and he got out when I was 32. What, 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 how old was you? When it was, was um, uh, two th- uh, two, 96, I think. 96, two years after the clean crime bill. Yeah, yeah. He 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 was a he was an example of that bill. Had mm-hmm. that bill had he did that three years prior, he wouldn't have did that much time. Yeah, he would have did probably two years at the most. Yeah, he went. So, 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 see how that affected his father, y'all. This is the educational moment that I'm trying to tell, like, bring awareness to. So it's like, uh, well, no, no, that's on my you activist type of stuff. We can yeah. get more back into the music if you want. No, to. no, no, no. That's good. So, what were you gonna say? Well, because the, the thing is, it's not just affecting me and you. It affects a lot of people. It affects like the whole generation. system. Okay, okay. If you if you molest a little kid, you get six years. But if you sell a little cocaine back in the day, you got fucking. Se- My dad got seventeen years for an ounce. Uh, unbelievable! Or unbelievable! Yeah. Seventeen years he went to prison. But, but my you, whole youth, when I, when I was sixteen, and he got out when I was thirty-two. Well, see, it's a justifiable crime in a uh, in a in the law of jury uh, in the jury. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? When they see it, the judge is justifiable, but it's really, it's really a payday for the jail. Yeah, to keep that bed full. Because there was you people I mean? in prison that did way worse shit. Oh yeah, and they were gonna get out before my dad. Oh yeah, and on me too. Mm-hmm. Like there was like really bad, like you know, kid offenders, Man, and look. they would be out. I, I I heard like. You know, because I was a when I went to prison, I became a leader in the prison, right? So I got to see people that were like even like in drug cases and uh, child molestation cases, because mm-hmm. our prison was just like a like a low camp, so it was like all kinds of different people, yeah, bank robbers, doctors that like was just prescribing too many pills, mm-hmm. like everything, lawyers, yeah, you, everything. You pretty much, it was a white collar. It was like gumbo. a white collar place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like all kinds of different. This one guy, he stole three million from from Home Depot. He got three years. Huh? Yep. I it know. Was, I tell my brother. He was that getting out, bro. You niggas out here. You guys are out here robbing convenience stores and getting nineteen years. Oh my god! Go, and not in embe- these these other folks is embezzling, taking thirty to three hundred million. Dude. And getting two years in jail. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all coming y'all, home yeah, to y'all the got money. The, yeah. You got y'all, got the, y'all doing the wrong shit. Y'all doing the way wrong shit. Yeah, man. bro. There was people in there that they would uh, credit card fraud, right? And they had like, they showed me pictures. They had Mercedes Benz all decked yeah, out, it, gold bro. chains, like all these, like all this nice shit. And they're yeah. like, man, we stole like $3 million worth of, you know, just throw. I don't even know if it's true, but they would like show me pictures of when mm-hmm. they were at home and shit. So like people weren't even doing. They were they were get, doing crimes where they were stealing from like these credit cards and stuff and getting like a year and a day. Man, look. and me for a ball three point five grams. Man, That's the only thing on my on my paperwork. Man, we used to do that when we was young. I got three years, bro. For that, yeah, you did for this for Stop a little thing, it. yeah. It was a federal indictment. All they had was 3.5 yeah, grams on me. That's that Clinton crime bill. They won't even do that to you today. Yeah, they hit me with three years, bro. Yeah, you had And then I had to go home. to immigration and all that shit. Oh, my God. And all I did was put it under the floor mat. And my indictment yeah. said um, uh, he took the eight ball and he put it under the floor mat. 
because did some other dude text me and said put the eight ball under the floor mat outside and someone came and got it whoever got it was the the police or something mm. and they got the phone call with the text message and I agreed and once once two people agreed to do a crime that can be a considered conspiracy. a conspiracy yeah and yeah. me I'm we had right, we had like freaking 17 people in the conspiracy so well that's how I know like it, it's crazy though but Prison has had you always respected prison, or at a point in time did you respect it when you was in there? Yeah, it was good, man. Like that's the person I am now. Yeah, is because I went in there look a, like a dumb little kid, uh-huh. and I out walked out like a, like I was a leader. Yeah. I became the number one u- leader in the yard, uh-huh. and that's why I came out with a different uh-huh. mindset to become a leader in Toledo. And I wasn't on my little bullshit, mm-hmm. you know. And you know, not everyone can respect it. Some people were like just thinking, "Oh, that's Yogi from back in the day." Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the same Yogi. But I went in prison, looking down. My head was down. I walked in there because I didn't know where I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I when I when I walked out of there, I was the number one leader in the prison mm-hmm. for all the Cubans because I'm Cuban, right. not the Mexicans, not the blacks, not the whites, because right. it was all split up in different. I know how I go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people. I wasn't the leader of the whole prison, but I them dudes was crying, hugging me mm-hmm. the day I was getting out. Cause you, cause you man it up. You from, yeah. went from boy to a man. Yeah. See, in our in our neighborhoods, it be like, like you said earlier, like the pedophiles they get short time sometimes, mm-hmm. and uh, some of them gangster gangster cats that you know, like I said, I'm against gangs, but I don't hate gangs. You know, gangs serve their purpose and they mm-hmm. got their place. Yeah, but. You know, the gang members that go to jail, do that time, be messing with the men and come back out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that's how a lot of people in our generation, well, not our generation, but I say the Gen, the gen X's and shit, they would be more like homophobe, not homophobic, but like the homosexual, they, they got some homo shit going on. Uh-huh, right? yeah. The LGBTQ, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but they it'd got be a more lot of feelings prison, about all that. It'd be a lot of them prison cats coming home, touching on, that was in there sneaking and geeking with them boys. Mm. And then they come out sneaking and geeking with these boys. And then that's how molestation happened when they be meeting girls and stuff. Yeah. They might molest a boy, maybe molest a girl, yeah. and they be gay. But they can fight good. They can beat up everybody in the neighborhood. Everybody give them a homecoming. Uh, party when he get home, even if he snitched. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I just haven't never understood that in our community. Yeah, yeah. You know, it might be different in yours, but in ours, we, if the LGBT gangster get out of jail, we all love him. Mm. Knowing that he's sneaking and geeking with them boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never understood that, man. <laughs> yeah, that but but it, that's the flip side of the, of the, the gang culture. That, that the, Some of them dudes be... Standing on 10 and they get out mm-hmm. and do their time, they don't tell on nobody, you know, and they come out like a man, you know, and it's well yeah. deserved when they get their part. No, but that's true. When you go to, when, uh, when you're in prison or jail, you always see a few guys doing some great holding and, hands in the yard. And, and you see, like, you're like, what the And, fuck and that's the are... thing, that's what I meant to say. So, the when they sneaking and geeking with them boys, uh, and the LGBTQ is, is kind of legal, it's legal now. I, I got family members that yeah. do it. And they, but I they, think they just try, I think they trying to normalize pedophilia. Yeah. Um, because I seen I read a book where it was it was normalized in a in a different uh year. Mm. Because it was norm the 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 LGBTQ was normalized. So over time the cause and effect of that was pedophilia in the future. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's uh, crazy, bro. Like um it's crazy, bro. And I and I and my thing about all that is, why can't we just go back to back in the day? You know, if yeah, you was a straight, is, a straight, a punk couldn't be around a straight man back in the day. And yeah. I ain't got nothing against gay people, but I'm just saying how it used to be my era that I come up in. It wasn't none of that going on. Don't. You kept that behind the in the bedroom. Yeah. You didn't bring that out in the public. My kid didn't have to see it. It was his choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah, I know. They Dude, forcing I it you. on us now, homie. We watching, we watching cereal commercials in their kitchen. You. What's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah. I, I hate all that It's stuff. getting real. Especially the more I think, the more I learn about Christ, the more I'm like, Come I on. mean, I still love everybody, but damn, bro. Why you got to put that on our face? They oh, the, the thing I wanted to tell you about the prison thing, the thing that sucks is, okay, I can understand if you're gay and then you go to jail, you're gay, you get out, you're gay. But no, 
They sleeping with women out here. Then they going to jail. They being all gay and shit. Then they coming back out and sleeping with women. Hey, listen, homie. They play, was, or they're sleeping with women and men once they get out. That, that's that's then they playing both sides. That's crazy. But when I went to Atlanta, that's so normal down there, homie. Like the women down there, they'll be like, Are you gay? That's that'd be the introduction question. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm from Ohio, I'm from up north, baby. We yeah. don't even do that. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been tricked three times and I just I'm tra- traumatized. And it's oh, like, wow. what the this is a real thing, homie. Yeah, that's so, crazy. I've seen that shit on Facebook. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> like I said, man. I uh, I've done like plenty of shows with like Bone Thugs and Lazy Bone and all mm, that yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So, like, when I was down there, I had access to the women. Not that I was doing anything, but I, I'm around the same women they around. They yeah. had little Yachty down there, Matthew Man had a whole bunch of celebrities in the in the in attendance, but the five star women, the women that we we like, they Instagram, yeah, 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 yeah. The they models. in the room too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to see <laughs> them in person, like the homie. <laughs> and it's just like I can't do this every night, homie. I love mm-hmm. my position as far as like playing the background sometimes too, because I, I gotta yeah. get at a break sometimes, man. Yeah. And I and I and Lazy Bone is such a great mentor, homie. Uh, I see how he moved. He don't yeah. care about none of that shit. And so they they all called you on your birthday, like you had Twister. Yeah, yeah. I just seen on your Facebook that your birthday party you had Twister it, there. It was it was me and Lazy party. Mm. Okay, so but Lazy didn't show up, so I had made sure he got on the phone for everybody oh, and okay. said hello. And I thought that was amazing that yeah, he yeah. did that. Crazy Bone Son was there. He the one that called him. Crazy Bone Son showed up, uh-huh. so. I was I was trying to get Snoop there. I was trying to get uh the dog pound and Snoop there, uh Scarface and the ghetto boys. I boy, I was trying to do it big. Yeah. But you know, Case pulled up, uh uh Wishbone pulled up, uh, and Twister pulled up. Yeah, that's I was dumb, happy enough that for that, shit, bro. Hey. You know what I mean? That's Just because much I'm love, a, I'm an Ohio vet, y'all. Like I said, yeah. I'm like the Bow Wild Toledo. I've been doing this so long. I got Friends from all over. You can look right now on YouTube in 2010. I was up there with Machine Gun Kelly. A ton of oh, footage yeah. with us. So you, you know, you fuck with Machine Gun Kelly before before the deal. Yeah, yeah. Before the deal. Since the deal, he man, he he explained to me like a lot of this stuff is just like it's just so many politics to this shit. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So like sometimes if I'm chilling with him, I can't even be like, yo, me and Kells, I might can take it, but he'd be like, bro, please don't post that because. He had to be out the clear, so I had to post it like a month later. Yeah, yeah. Because under his contract, sometimes he ain't even supposed to be in a strip club. Mm. He ain't supposed to have nobody on the tour bus. You feel me? Or or whatever we got going on, he he ain't supposed to be doing that. So yeah, he can't just like I can't just put it on him like I hey man, this kills, y'all. You feel me? So Yeah, yeah. But I ain't been around him in a grip, bro, because he, you know, since that rap god shit. In that rap devil. He's been big. He's like, been he, really busy. He went like mainstream. He and did, he but change up shit. I, I tagged him in something and he reposted it. And I were, and then that let me know he's still home. Yeah, he's you still fucking with He's you. still fucking with home. You yeah. Feel me? So yeah. I respect that. Yeah, for sure. I think he changed it up. Like he took covered all his tattoos. Yeah. He just left a couple little spots open. And man, bro, I modeled myself after you, bro. Why you do that, bro? <laughs> come on, Carlson, bro. You got to do, man. Come on, bro. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean, he got a different journey. You know, our lives is different seasons, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we, we can change up. Like, you might have started rapping a certain way, and then all of a sudden you change it up. Mm-hmm. Like, every once in a while, you might change up, like, you know, the the stuff you're talking about, you right. know? Or, right. Or just your look or whatever, you know? Because like I said, like, with him back in, like, that was 2010, bro. That mm-hmm. was 14 years ago. That So he's been on for about, i say, 13 of it. Uh. We, we was young, badass little niggas with a hope and a dream, bro. Yeah. Everybody was, bro. I'm from the real Ohio industry, bro. I remember in 2000 when I was first out here, when it was CDs, bro. Mm-hmm. We was cranking thousands of CDs. Uh, when the MySpace era came, I say 2005-ish, 2006, bro, I was the number two artist on MySpace. Mm-hmm. Soldier Boy was the oh, number one real? artist. Yeah, I was Damn. the number two artist. That's uh, fire. Yeah, and I and I held that crown. Because that's when internet first came out. Bro, nobody knew about MySpace. Yeah. But I was capitalizing on it because everybody on the internet that wasn't real people, well, they were real people, but they to me it was just like, yo, this is crazy. Because yeah. what I had did was 
my homeboy was like, I was I was posting shit and just trying to see if it'd get some attention, but it really wasn't. My dude was like, well, my cousin was like, hey, bro, put 50 Cent on the club. Make that the name of your profile. Mm. Bro, overnight, I had a million views. Damn. It was crazy. In, in a week, I had like 16 million views. At this point, I'm big shit popping. I'm talking shit. Mm. Yeah, niggas, y'all niggas can't fuck with me. Nigga, I'm the hottest thing in America. Mm. I'm going to the chart. They had a thousand chart. I was number two. Unbelievable. So I've always been a viral sensation. Mm. You feel me? So uh, I just went viral twice this year. Yeah, you be putting out some yeah, funny yeah. stuff, dude. <laughs> yeah, I swear man. your memes, yeah. I don't know like where you come up with this stuff or whatever. Like You get inspired by certain things, I'm sure. Sometimes I read them and I'm like, man, dude, like, because I know, like, when I, I do social media, mm -hmm. so I get inspired by things and I might come up with something else about it. Mm -hmm. So I be reading your stuff and I'm like, man, you do a good job. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's raunchy. Sometimes it's, you know, you know, controversial. Yeah, I'm all whatever. that in one. Yeah, it's I'm fun, glad you man. see that. That's what you've been getting here. Live, raw, and uncut, Yeah, bro. you have a fun social media. I love following your stuff you know man, what I'm appreciate saying? that everything bro. you do bro i just dropped the album called no feelings y'all go get that it's me and my comrade dizzy folks uh it's a it's a emotional album uh but it's our first time using ai on it so you know we got morgan freeman um narrating it for us okay it's pretty dope man uh y'all gotta go check that out i'm singing on it i'm rapping on it i produced uh 14 out of 15 songs on it and uh, yeah, man, I'm back in my bag. I got about the boom three coming out. Uh, we working on some short films, uh, and I'm staying busy with Trap Cinematics. That's my film company, y'all. Y'all can come get uh, book a video, man. You too, man. Mm -hmm. Anytime, man. And I, you know, I pull up for Yogi though, you yeah. know. But y'all got a book. Y'all got a book one. Yeah, you know. So, 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 so you you make people's videos now? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a uh, full time director. I, I I got a film company now. Okay. Trap Cinematics, and we've been doing uh, man, we've been doing outstanding. Okay. Uh, rap is fun. I love rap. I I'm a pioneer in this game, and a leader, and uh, and and a honcho in the game. But my second craft now is directing because mm -hmm. this brought me so it's opened so many more doors for me. Yeah. Like it's cool to rap, but it, the the game is oversaturated right now, right yeah, yeah. now. Until we weed everybody out, it's gonna be hard. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But that don't mean that my blessings don't be. I don't exp I don't appreciate my blessings. Every boom click fan out there, if you bought some merch off Amazon, we gotta. All you gotta do is, is get on Amazon and type in boom click clothing, mm -hmm. and I got. 11 pages full of clothes. We got thongs. We got, we yeah, got everything. hoodies, t-shirts, uh, cut-off shirts, vests. Boom click. Everything boom click. We got, for the females, we got the uh, boom chicks. Mm. So we got the same material. Man, we got, we got phone poppers. Mm. You know what I mean? That you hold your phone with. Yeah, I never yeah. had one, but I got a bunch of them. Like, we got yeah, all that so. stuff. We got a whole warehouse of boom click merch, y'all. So y'all go cop that. Yeah. Yeah. Boomclick.com, is that what it is? No, I go to Amazon.com. Like, just like you shopping oh, on Amazon. Amazon and yeah, then, you go to Amazon. And they and just can, type in Boomclick. Boom click clothing. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. I can do it right here, right yeah. now for y'all, but I ain't going to do it. Yeah, that's but, fine. That's fire, though. Just, so just go to Amazon and type in Boomclick clothing. Yeah. And boom they'll click. find your, it's like your Amazon store. Right? Yeah, I got my own store. Yep, that's yep, dope. Yep, that's for the, uh, just to keep the fans hungry, I got tired of people being like, hey, man, where the merch? Yeah, yeah. Take the link. Yeah. Just so you can't bullshit me and you and, and, and yeah. I, I can't bullshit you. Here go yeah. the link. Here's the, here's the link. <laughs> I got tired of dropping off them shirts. We did that shit for 15 years, y'all. Yeah, that's it's uh, hard. But, you know, some people have to start somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Every, everybody has their own journey because I'm thinking about making merch myself. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm, I'm going to do it, like, you know. I already got some shirts and some hoodies. The thing is I want to make it, like um, – for me and the pe my peoples and stuff. Right. And then eventually, if I got to make a little store, but I don't have the actual people wanting it yet. Look, know? man, after you're done with this, I can I can plug you in. Yeah, on how yeah, to, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to, I'll ask you, I'll ask you about this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because you can always show me some things. Just like I was trying to show you about the podcast, I, I told you, so I got, now I got, I wanted to talk a little bit about my, about my sponsors. Okay. Just to, so I got Revive Health as my sponsor. 
Restore Hyper Wellness. Okay. A- Maria Escobar with Avon, Off right. the Chain Bullies, and then uh, Wild Side Brewing Company, which is downtown, right down the street. And they're, every they're Wednesday, amazing, by the way. Yeah, every Wednesday they have half off pizza. Oh, so wow. so today Wednesday. Well, this this is gonna come out on a Saturday, but every Wednesday, if you go to Wild Side Brewing Company, you get half off pizza, and then uh, Revive Health and Restore Wellness. They're both for like for you to be healthy. Uh, Restore Wellness is like an IV center, and Revive Health is like a clinic online. So yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about them because. I really never get a chance to, yeah. and then, and then I, I feel kind of bad because no nah, man, get man. So that's why. I, hey, we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta pay the bills. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, because the thing is, that's why I told you, like, that's how I get my the money to to keep this going and for it to be free for the fans, you know, for, for whoever sure. wants to watch. Y'all hear that? Yeah, I don't I don't have to charge him, or he don't he don't have to charge me because sometimes. People want to get paid to come on too. Yeah. So you don't charge me. I don't charge you. The sponsors pay for it. We advertise on our social media for the sponsors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, eventually, I think that's a good idea for all of our businesses, you know, yeah. like yeah. even your social media or, you know, whatever. Eventually, Young you, Chuck One, by the way, on every platform. Yeah, what is it? Young Chuck One. Y U N G, not Y O U N G. Y U N G. Young Chuck One. I'm. Psst. Go on in there, man. You might, all, find, all you might find a song that you heard when you was younger or when you was in high school and be like, he did this? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's me. Yeah. I've been, I've been out here a long time. On all platforms, Young on Chuck. On all one. platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, Twitter, X, whatever. Yeah. And Snapchat. if anybody wants to sponsor him and help him out, you know, he'll shout you out on a video yeah. or something. Hey, hit me up on my cash app. Yeah. Can you I send my cash app on here? Yeah, good. Is ahead. that smart? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it is yeah. because, you know. But we'll put it in the link. Yeah, we'll put it, in, we'll put yeah. it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's <laughs> some notes. You can send me a, anything you want to send me, all the links and everything. Okay. You send them to me and I'll put them in the description. Okay, for sure. Yeah, so. we'll do that for sure. Yeah, because, um, yeah, because like that, you know, somebody might want to just give you a whole outfit. Right. And be like, hey, rock a video with this outfit on. Mm-hmm. That's like sponsor, you know? Yeah. I I'm u- sure you've had stuff like yeah, that. I yeah, I used to do I used to do that type of stuff, man. Uh like I well actually I used to do it with my own clothing. Like mm-hmm. uh I used to like I speak to the youth uh two times a year at JDC, the juvenile detention center in Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. So you know, I might go in there and talk to them a little rough, though, because they don't understand, like, when you talk to them, like... Nice. <laughs> you talk to them, hey, man, hey, say, young brother. They don't want to hear, hey, man, get your ass. Man, hey, man, sit down, bro. We ain't doing that right now. Man. Hey, you got to talk to them with they, they with identify. With authority. Yeah, because their parents talk to them like that, and you in jail. Yeah, yeah. So I can talk to them any way I want to. Yeah. They love when you real aggressive, and I and I like to do it. So, uh, but then all them little niggas hear my story, they be like, woo! I can do it, homie. I was mm-hmm. in your same seat one day, homie. A lot, a lot of times when I was underage, I was—I mean, when I was a, in juvenile, I've been where they were sitting at. So I'm the perfect guy to speak to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, bro. I'm talking caseworkers, group homes, foster brothers. Uh, bro, I didn't seen it all, man. I was—I uh, tell this story that I never told nobody, but my daughter always be like, "Yo, why don't you tell people that?" Mm-hmm. So I was in a foster home one time, bro. And this lady was beating the shit out this baby, homie. Like she had one of them wooden spoons, but it, you know, she was beating the baby. Damn. I was, I was asleep. And they, like her husband had went to church with the other kids, but she used to, it was a group home, right? She had this baby, man. She was beating the shit out this baby. Right? Damn. Like, whoosh, whoosh, and the baby like ah, getting louder every smack. And she's hitting it harder. Like I said, shut up. Damn. Loopy dog. Right? So. I get downstairs. She's like, oh, you didn't go to church? I said, no. Nah. Because I was like, I felt like I had to go down there and say that little baby. You know what yeah. I mean? But just by my presence being there. So she's like, yeah. Oh, this is a crack baby. This is a crack baby. So yeah, I had to wear his ass out because it's a crack baby. So <laughs> I just knew that was wrong. 
Yeah, that I one. knew that was wrong, bro, and I never told, and I should have told on your ass, lady. And my, yeah. I never told on your ass. But she wore that baby out, Damn. bro, and the baby had like a distinctive cry, like a crack baby cry. Damn. She wasn't lying. The baby was a crack baby. That baby's probably 20, 25 now. Damn. But yeah, so I've seen some egregious things, homie. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I, my my world wasn't Disney, Disney and Smiles. Yeah, okay. Growing up, but I still stayed strong. Uh, I didn't have power, money, respect, street knowledge, and wisdom and fame, homie. Mm-hmm. But it don't it don't keep the demons away. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you taking the shit, you you Devon Bailey. You ain't Young Chuck. Yeah. When you by yourself. You not young Chuck, you Devon Who Bailey. Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? Devin Bailey. Devon Bailey. Devon That's Bailey. what the doctors say. Yeah. Devin Bailey, the teachers That's say. Your Devin That's Bailey. That it's Devon Bailey. <laughs> but yeah, some people gotta get to know that the actual character and not the music. Bro, I get on every platform talking about my music. This feel good to let loose and talk about who yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, and that's why I give people the opportunity to to, you know, put out what they want and talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. It's almost like not only for you, but for me, like a little therapy session yeah, where we can just sure. get out and talk about our lives and, mm-hmm. and let free and just talk about whatever you want. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, man. I learned a lot about you today, man. That's a, a mag- magnificent story. If you got a link to that, send it to me, bro. Yeah. When I'm working out, I just listen to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. For like, it's like one of my first podcasts, I talked about my prison story and okay. stuff like that. I talk a little bit about my family, but also my family, they don't like it, me talking about them because- yeah. Some of them are still, uh, you know, still living that yeah, life, yeah. living that life, or in jail, or having mm-hmm. trauma, you know. Right, right. So it's Absolutely. still a little, it's still a little iffy. But also, I don't want to disrespect nobody. Facts. But I do talk about my life, right. about what I've been through in the prison and all that mm-hmm. from the beginning. That's how I started this podcast. I felt like I got a story, just like you got a story. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. We all have. Not everyone has a story, but some people have a story. Some people have a good story. Yeah, so, some yeah. people. Some people's story, you know, every story can be interesting. Yeah, I think everybody can write a book. It. Yeah, for sure. Everybody can write a book, like and especially an older person. Right. I'm not saying like a 17 year old that haven't been through nothing. I am. Like, uh, some of these 17 year olds have been through a lot, mm. but I'm not saying that. In every generation, in every uh, decade, there's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. something going on. But I'm saying y'all got it so much easier than we yeah. had it, y'all. If we, dude, there wasn't no cell phones. Can you imagine a world with no cell no phones? No cell phones, dude. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Remember how cool it would be to call your mama and say, hey, I'm in the front door? Yeah. That was cool. That was cool, bro. <laughs> when my yeah. daughter was born, they had to page me because mm. I didn't have a cell phone at that time. You had the, what was it? Uh, It was four, three, seven. Nine. That was help. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah, you remember? Like yeah. I don't remember. If you yeah, was yeah, out yeah. cheating, they, yeah, they then put you the look 304. At, you turn it around and it's you see help. help. Yeah. 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 Because like, yeah, I didn't have it. It's like one of those page plus. Remember when we had Bro, pages and stuff? I remember the because pages. Because there's a certain time where phones came, but we didn't have that right from the get-go. Oh, I me. Mean, that's why these niggas used to be jealous of me. I was the kid with the pager, bro. Mm-hmm. I was the kid with the cell phone. Yeah. I was the one. Everybody always had more than everybody else. Yeah. Always, bro. And and I'm not I'm not bragging. I just didn't know. Yeah, like yeah. I said earlier, I was intrigued with the streets. I liked it to be around the house that was dirty. And my yeah. friend had to wear the same shirt. I thought this shit was cool, homie. Yeah, and you weren't scared to change. Some people are scared to change. You seen the internet? You jumped on it. You 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 seen a phone? You hurried up and said, "Hey, mom, give me one." Yeah. You you, you yeah. some people be lacking, bro. Well, you, you jumped the, on things it's, early. It's the parental. It's the parental because some parents just didn't have it or lack thereof or didn't care. Yeah. Man, homie, a lot of my friends didn't have shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. They didn't have nothing, homie. I used to feed all my friends cereal. Well, yeah, but you live you live with grandma and grandpa, right? Oh yeah. And if they and, had a pool and, table in the back and the downstairs look, they and made a pool it. in the back, so you so guys you, was cool, cool. Well, so like, you not asked me, rich, but the cool. Yeah. So you asked me where I'm from. I'm. A, yeah. I just want to tell it real quick. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm from the south side of Toledo. I okay, lived there for south three side. years. Went to my grandparents until I was eight, eight and a half, going on nine. No, about nine. All right, mm-hmm. and that was in Rossford, Ohio. That's okay. where 
my grandparents, they had made it out the hood. Mm. A lot of people have given me a lot of flag for that. Like, yo, <laughs> you from Rossford. You lived in Rossford, <laughs> homie. My my whole family's from the south side. Then, yeah. then like my, you know, my whole, my other half of my family's from the north and the east. Yeah, like yeah. real gangsters. Like <laughs> real gangsters in my family. You feel me? So, no, nah, they can vouch for me. You know, granddaddy had a house out, you know, in, in the Rossford. suburbs. And, and then you had to go move with him. Well, it wasn't I, your I choice, moved with, right? It was grandma and grandpa. I moved there because my, you know, like I said, Papa was a Rolling Stone. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up at grandpa, grandpa house, and they was trying to get me out of what my mom went through, what my dad went through. So I was they start over. I was they they second chance at like, mm-hmm. I fucked up all these other kids. Let me at least help with my grandbaby. So yeah. I was that. Yeah, these people are stupid. Look. If they, if their mindset says to them, man, but you from Rosford, they should be like, bro, that's dope. Homie. You got sent to Rosford. Man, Homie, at least you got to, you know what I'm saying? They thinking negative when that should be a freaking positive. Oh. You got out the hood and you became somebody and you're smart about it and you're doing it with the right mindset. Homie, that's where I learned how to talk. That's where I learned how to talk so good. That's where I learned how to evoke feelings. That's how I knew how to outsmart somebody. Like it, the educational side over there, my grandfather was like a militant man like boy hey uh get your elbows off the table put your wrist on there hey may i be excused yes mm-hmm. sir no sir uh thank you no yeah. no please you know what i mean it was all oh, cut that grass you know what i mean oh you don't want to oh, sit in the corner there ain't no ass whooping if he had to whoop your ass he was whooping ass yeah yeah but hey he tried to do other things like militant things that taught you how to do things like uh when you clean the bathroom, there might be a little dirt around the ring of the, the knives. You might mm-hmm. not see that. He yeah. don't see that. Yeah, hey, yeah. nigga, hey, you ain't get this. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, how yeah. can it be dirty? Like, and then he <laughs> find that. Like, yo, bro, different type of cat. Yeah, These kids don't have is. that structure, bro. Like no. I said, the church, good home values. It takes a village to raise a child, man. Uh, the village raised me. Mm-hmm. You know, but see, this is what I I don't like that they did, and I love them to death, and I I don't know what. It ain't they fault. Mm-hmm. But they didn't discipline me when I was wrong. Like, like they disciplined me when I did wrong to mm-hmm. them. You know, uh, they didn't discipline me when the cops brought me home or when they had to go pick me up from the police station. Mm-hmm. I ain't getting no ground. I didn't get grounded. I can go right back outside. Mm-hmm. That's where I think I I lacked that early. Mm-hmm. So when, when I went to the boys' home, that was about 99. I stayed there uh until 2000, Bush had just came in office. Uh, then I went back to the South Side, and I was closer to my family. I was closer to the hood. I was closer to the projects. I was closer to everything that was deemed to bring me down for mm. sure. And I prevailed through it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So they took me out of a, a situation that I was making bad in Rossford. Because, like, like, yeah, Rossford sounds like, oh, you know, it's great, but it's still... An integration problem there. Yeah. They put all the blacks in one area, and then everything around is white. So mm-hmm. there, I hate to say it was like a hood there. Like nobody believes that, but there really was, bro. Yeah. It really was. It's yeah. like you could tell it's a black area. Yeah, yeah. And that's where all the brothers was, and all and, and a lot of people. A lot of people was family. So my auntie was around the corner. This person was over there. My uncle Salee lived over here. Like it was crazy how. We were so close. And it's, yeah. it's crazy, but it's weird. My I live in a little neighborhood by Oakdale School, right, mm-hmm. on the east side. It's just a little tiny neighborhood, but there's one street. It's called Ironwood. Mm-hmm. All the black families lived on Ironwood. Yeah. Because they just rented next door to each other. Right. And then we, like, everybody else was mixed. There was still black people in other houses, but I'm saying, like, that neighborhood was just... Full, full of, of black. Yeah, and it was yeah. Ironwood. Yeah. And we all kicked it on Ironwood. There was a park on Ironwood, and that's where we all kicked in. And and we was all integrated in our in our town, you know, in our in our school, Oakdale. Everybody loved everybody. We all played football together, but they all lived on one street. It's like they they either either it's, either it's either they wanted line. to because maybe like two, like Maybe you're you rent here, but then like your cousin wants to rent next door, mm-hmm. and then eventually it becomes like the black. Mm-hmm. It was like a whole street. It was all yeah, the black we, we let we let the inmates run the building, man. You mm-hmm. know when we come around, hey, the inmates running the building, man. Come on this block, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So 
You know, that that's how we try to do it. We call it looking out, but sometimes you looking out for family members that you can't take account for. Mm. And they might be, you know, this one might be lacking. You know, you can't control people. Yeah. But see, that's why, like, I respect the Spanish because they look out for each other. They help each other. They, You don't never really see them fighting over no girl. You don't see them competing with the cars. Mm. You don't really see them trying to, I fuck your bitch, you fuck my bitch. Yeah. Y'all more, like, work together and y'all help each other. Yeah. Brothers ain't figured that out yet. Yeah, because we're we're from big families. Mm -hmm. I mean, them brothers are too. You know what I'm saying? Brothers are too, but every we too stuck into competing with each other, and that's what, like, honestly, bro, that's where I've always, when something backfired on me or went left, it was from trying to be right to somebody and help somebody or mm -hmm. grow somebody else, yeah. and it a backfire on me. I never understood that. Like, I fell out with a dude. They created a wed a war in Toledo between me and their camp. Oh, for real? For no reason, homie. Damn. For no reason, homie. You probably know exactly who I'm talking about, but I don't I ain't gonna say his name. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you off camera, but let's not uh, give him no promotion. Yeah, no, I, no, but it's just like why though, homie? Like yeah. and I and because I, I helped him do so much. Mm. So I've learned my So lesson. he was part of your crew and no, then, or he, he, he you helped him crew. with some reason. You helped him, but then all of a sudden he just turned on you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, a 360. Not only that, try to take my whole blueprint, bro. Oh, okay. It was like it's 100% backstabbing shit. If you look at his his catalog and then look at mine, you'll see where he he tried to he be like, like follow me. suit. Yeah. Yeah, there's people that do you know, that. I created my own blueprint when back when there was no blueprint. Mm -hmm. I was the first copy. You get what I'm saying? I was the, I was Battle rapping everybody in the neighborhood. Oh, you pretty good. Mm -hmm. I started doing the talent shows. I won all my talent shows. I don't care if I was versing adults, teenagers, or kids. I beat them all. Yeah. I, they, I'm not because I'm the man. No, it's because like it, God destined me to be that, which, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, landed me with Frank Wright because I won, a, I won something. I won some talent show and it got me like an hour studio time with a CD and a printout with the graphics on the CD and a photo and a, a free beat or something. Mm. In 2002, that was that was big time. Yeah. You feel me? So that's yeah. how I got introduced to Frank Wright. A couple years later, I say about four years later, that's when he he signed me to the local label Flippin' Flex. Okay. And uh, man, that's after after that it was the About the Boom series. Were you solo at first? It was all you just solo. I was right? all I mean, I was by myself. I was the I was writing rhymes in the foster home. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I turned 18, that's when I just took off like a rocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did everything solo for like two or three albums. I made about not albums because they weren't considered albums back then. They were mixtapes. Mm -hmm. And those mixtapes propelled me to get to Frank. Cause my ad, my mastering was crazy. It was he was like, you did this. This is a computer mix, and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah. He was like, man, this shit sound good, man. You need to be with us. So when I got over there, like I said, I learned the business. Uh, he had a different calling, so I didn't get the treatment. Magic wand and all them cats got. I had to go right back to the block mm -hmm. and, and figure this shit out again. Mm -hmm. But I I learned everything I needed to know, and I and I was young, so I said, let's try it. Just the, like every other day, I hear I'm a legend. Oh, Young Chuck, you a legend, man. Mm -hmm. Young Chuck, he a legend, man. Young Chuck, y'all forgot to mention his name because mm -hmm. I just been in here, so I've been doing it so long, man. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. you've been you've been doing this a very long time. You and okay, so so you when did you guys become Boom Click? Not that couple a couple years ago or twenty twenty twelve. CT Diamond used to so, be oh twenty twelve. So it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. Okay, uh, T Diamond used to be. T Diamond used to be with UGE, so he was my rivals. Mm -hmm. We was flipping flex. The uh, Magic Wand, me, a couple other cats, Tracy. You know, we had a whole bunch of people going on. They had T Diamond over there, and uh, you know, after our 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 paperwork was finished mm -hmm. and we were free agents, mm -hmm. I said, "Hey man, why don't we get together?" So we have so a your con both of you guys contracts with the local. Uh, or whatever we're the over because back then you used to get the whole package. Hey, rappers, let me let me let you know that too. Yeah. Back then you used to sign with a local level uh, label, like let's say in in Houston, it would be 
uh, rap a lot or mm-hmm. Swisher House. Yeah. You sign with Flip and Flex or UGE or some somebody Hustle Hand or something. You get a whole package. You get the radio package. You get the uh, club package. When they do the bash at the bay and invite Pretty Ricky, uh, DJ mm-hmm. Drama, all these celebrities here with Life Jennings shit. When we had all the big wigs here. You mm-hmm. get to get on that show in front of 5,000 to 10,000 yeah. people. You get to get get up there just a yay or nay if you hot or not. Yeah, yeah. I did it four years in a row, homie. This is a lifetime opportunity that only a few people shared that stage yeah. to have. And I've been on it four times. Homie. Yeah, the Bash of the Bay. The Bash of the Bay. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on all of them. Yeah, Go yeah. look at the, 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 it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, fire. Back then, those labels used to push that type of work. You guys were already boom click at that time? No. Uh, I was young Chuck about to boom. Mm. But I had a boom. I had a click. See, boom click came because the, the, the name came because I had a song called About the Boom. Mm. So, and it was such a, like, Gucci man. I ain't saying Gucci man, he didn't fall off, but I really kind of took his lane because I always been into trapping. Mm-hmm. Selling drugs, getting it by, you know what I mean? Not even if it's, traffic could be working a job, but getting money. Mm-hmm. So, about the boom was about that. Mm-hmm. Everybody, it was such a hit in the hood, bro. In the hood, bro. It yeah. was such a hit, bro. Uh, that people just was like, what up, boom, click, boom, yeah. click. I don't know where that, that, and then when I heard it, I said, that's hard. Yeah. And it stuck. And I heard it again. I said, what the fuck is people saying Boom Click for? So I made a song called Boom Click. That pushed the name way further because I promoted it in the direction that I wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And it went. You feel me? Yeah. After that, I said, I need some recruits. Uh, Like back to Machine Gun Kelly. Our blueprint back then was get a crew uh, so you can put niggas on. If it's Lloyd Banks and Young Buck, Mm -hmm. uh, if it's, you know, Ty Dolla Sign and Juicy J, or... You know, whatever it is, we we yeah. put somebody else on. Even Eminem had D12. Yeah, you had D12, OB Twice, 50 Cent, you know, uh, Stat Quo, a bunch of guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, everybody had a little click that they wanted to put on, at least to get them going and then yeah, break off. and then you break off. You be, mm. hey, from here, you got to be your own boss. But yeah, yeah. that's what I tried to do with T-Diamond and them. So yeah. not tried. I actually did it. All the guys were they boss. We we don't fight about brawls over here. We fuck them all, homie. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't we don't hate on the next man. We make the next man great. We're all leaders. Mm-hmm. So we going to all lead somebody in the, the right direction. Leaders uh leaders make the group better. Mm-hmm. Bosses just tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's a difference. You know, so we all lead in our crew, and that's yeah. how we always get. I remember when done. I first met you guys. You guys were all three back there and uh, behind code, mm-hmm. and we were just chilling back there, smoking and stuff. And you guys told me we're together, but we also do things separate. Yeah, too. for sure. Yeah, and that's cool because no one's like, "Oh, he's gonna go do fucking a podcast. Why can't we go?" But really, you know what I'm saying? We, they can come. Yeah. But we got to do it. We can do it one by one. So we can get all their stories. So we can one by one, y'all. Yeah. Because sometimes so, people do get mad. And it might yeah. not be the rappers. It might be the rest of the gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you know. But that like, the, the way that, you know, every podcast is different. Some people do like a whole group of people. Mm-hmm. But I want to know your story. Right. And then one day maybe we can do the whole crew here. Right, right, right. Or I can day. meet you guys somewhere and on a stage or something. I mm-hmm. always wanted to do like a live podcast, like where we go. And like like to, we go to the code and everybody oh, yeah. gets a Just dinner. Get live. Everybody gets a dinner. You can pull it off. And I sit down. Could. Maybe we can do like a rap song first. You know, like a little show first. Like after they get off stage, yeah, they come and then in we the do back a podcast. And, then, yeah. and I promote it, so I'll get people come. They can I, eat dinner. I they gotta can, get you some views. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I think a live because because other people do live podcasts. Hell yeah! They're, hell yeah! They'll watch that shit. Yeah, and then all I got to do is just make sure I book a good, interesting person. Right. And I don't got to go in on all their whole lives. We can just chop it up and talk about other things or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or we can ask, people can ask us questions from the, right. from the crowd. Like a comedy show, but a live podcast. Hey, man, I'm all for it, man. Yeah. I love the sound of that, bro. I like progression, bro. I like yeah. to see where you where you went to where you at now. Yeah, you, I'm going to send you my first episode. Yeah, send that. And I'm going to send you my prison episode. Oh, yeah, I want Because those I are two good ones. The first one is only real short. Mm-hmm. It's with the day that I set the camera down mm-hmm. and it was my living room in my house and I said, I'm going to start a podcast and then 
I think the next one was in a garage, and then in my car. So you been doing it that long? Yeah. You thinking? Oh, thank yeah. Them. Yeah, he been out here, y'all, man. Shout out to Yogi, man. Thanks, Big man. Yogi. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man, that for sure. Um, another thing I want to ask you, okay, you know how your name is uh, Young Chuck One on our social media? Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of D1? D1 is like a, a rapper from New Orleans, but he tries to do positive music, and he's like shot it right now. He's a... Uh, He's going against all, like, you know, not going against, but he's saying that we should start rapping Talking more. Talking about the dude with the dread. Yeah, yeah we I should love start guy, rapping man. more positive. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. He talking about stuff that, that, that that's a little over the America's head right now. Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier. But you remind me of him. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They don't want to hear that, though. They yeah. don't want to hear that type of shit. They yeah. don't want to hear that. Yeah, me like telling positive you that messaging. I called the police on some fools. Even if I did or didn't, they did they and already ran away, homie. Because yeah. only the real gonna understand what I'm saying, bro. We 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 older, bro. We don't got time to be on what they on. Yeah. You feel me? So I, I respect everything D1 saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you feed your brain is what's gonna come out your mouth. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's basically what, it's a rat on the wheel. You are gonna always stay in the constant arguments if you are argument in person. If you watching baddies or watching negative stuff, mm-hmm. you if you stand to God, I promise you ain't nothing. It's gonna weed out all the yeah. bad things in your yeah, life. And he, what, you ain't never heard nobody that that's in the God say, "Man, damn, man, my my tire went flat in front of my job, y'all. <laughs> hey, y'all, this my last. This my this my um gas bill. They about to shut us off. Yeah." Hey, y'all, this my eviction notice. They about to kick me out tomorrow. No, you put God first, everything come after me. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy how God helps you. If you really put God first, dude, you'll grow every little thing that you can, especially if you read what's in the Bible or just listen. You don't even got to read the Bible. You can listen to Christian podcasts, and they, there's so many good Christian podcasts online, and it's not like old school Christian. It's like new age, like dudes from Atlanta, well, I like- used- I like used to listen to, stuff. you know who the Newsboys is? Man, uh, they was fire no, when I, I was never growing heard of up. Them. They was fire. They had like a disco album that was amazing. It was yeah. a Christian. Uh, I know a lot of Christian music, homie. Uh, yeah. Lecrae's. Or, uh, Lecrae. 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 Yeah, yeah, Lecrae. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of dudes. Like this dude, One Pew. One K Pew. Dude is fire. Man. That dude, D1. D1 is fire, but he doesn't just do Christian music. Mm-hmm. He does like, hey, let's change the message music. Yeah, change like, the let's message. not talk about, you know, twerking and let's not talk about gu- gunplay. Let's talk about m- p- positive messaging. Yeah, shit. And trying to, he, he shout out uh, Mick, Meek Mills. He said, come on, man, you, you're doing prison reform, but you just made a song with Fat Joe or whatever talking about but murdering. The, like, sad, the sad thing is, Meek Mill knows that. Yeah. Meek Mill knows. Meek that. Mill says, that, "Well, they, the record companies push more the the song with the murder." You ever seen an artist that didn't come out with that second album or that third one, and you wondered why? Mm. That's why. Yeah, they didn't want to play the game. This is they platforming, they stage. If we don't want your shit out, we're not putting it yeah, out. Yeah, you know, you do what we tell you to do. You under contract. Yeah, yeah. So do what we said. We said we want to part. You seen, you remember Eminem, Eminem's album on uh, the Marshall Mathers LP2? A yes. lot of y'all probably too young to know that. What did what did uh Paul say? Man, I can't sell this. You talking about Vicodin, don't raping your mama. Nigga, yeah. you need to be like Dre. He talking about 40s and bitches yeah. and riding dubs. Yeah. I need you to talk that. That's exactly how they treat you when you're yeah. in that, in them offices. That's, yeah, that's why crazy. any deal that I've had presented to me, Cash Money was my first deal when they was uh, working on Young Money. Mm. I got presented a contract. Remember, if you go back and look, they got an uh, artist named Young Chucky. I can screenshot it and show you the old contract, mm. with, uh, but it's got an NDA on there. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not allowed to do that. But I think the Statue of Libertations is gone now. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the point is... Uh, uh, Wayne Slim and uh, Baby was working on the new Young Money. They didn't have Drake yet. They mm-hmm. might have. They I don't know who they had, but they they weren't out yet. And I had the contract. My uh, I let Frank see it. He said, "Look, bro, this is a slave contract, bro." He actually laughed, <laughs> bro. This is a 1942 contract, nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, they gonna have you singing more than the uh, Gladys Knights in the pits. Yeah, yeah. And you ain't getting paid. Yeah, you don't want to sign your life for it. So I said, 
it's either that or stay in the hood. Mm-hmm. He said, look, bro, just stay in the hood. So I gave it back after that. Then you see Young Money. Young Money. Mm-hmm. And I seen the whole camp, and I was like, oh, my God, he this was real. Mm-hmm. He really wanted to put everybody out. And he had a little guy named Little Chuck, and he was trash. He had nothing on me at the time. But I was like, was he my replacement? Yeah. Because yeah, they Chuck. wanted Young Chuck. Yeah, that's crazy. Little Chucky. Oh, yeah. They're so like, oh, okay. Stuff. Young Chuck said no. We'll take Little Chucky. Call Little Chucky. Hey, baby and Slim, man. Holla at me. I'm ready now, homie. I'm, yeah. Hey, I'm way more advanced and better now. So, yeah. Yeah, the reason why, um, but like if you do those contracts, it's like you're living for them. You're, you are you got to do all this stuff for them, mm-hmm. and you make a little tiny percentage on each, on each thing. I would have got fucked over at the time because I ain't had no real motion. Mm-hmm. I was going to expect the label to do everything for me. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you got to sign with people that got, you got this camp doing this and talks with this camp doing that with this parent label helping with this and your label sorting all the paperwork and picking up the calls and pressing the buttons. You really need to have a lot going for yourself to get a record to, to mm. do numbers, bro. Mm. Or you can just independent uh, enjoy the independent life like Tech 9 and them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which will pay off in the long run, but it's yeah. a long run. Yeah, cuz you got to give me, you got to find all your your fans and Man, everything listen, yourself. Listen, emails is hard to keep track of. All that crazy stuff, bro. We did it, bro. Yeah. We've done we've done everything in different ways. We're just trying to do new things and get better at it. And you guys are still doing shows because I met you guys at a show at the Code. You guys actually performed that night. Yeah, you guys did a. It was like a contest type deal. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why I first started going to the Code because um, Sly invited me to uh, go and do like a just to go do like a competition. Sly, shout out, my, shout hey, out to Sly. Sly, my mud brother, man. We used to hang out real tough, man. Real yeah. tough, man. I know everybody, man. I told you I'm the Bow Wow Toledo, bro. Like, yeah. I, I mean, but I, you know, I'm a little more talented than Bow, bro. But yeah. I, I respect Bow as a legend, though. He's a legend, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm a, I'm the real legend of Ohio, Bow. Shout out to Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, he, he, you know what? A lot of people don't give him enough credit. Yeah. He, he the reason why we take selfies. Mm. He the reason why we post stats. He the reason why we sh- we we shoot videos and post them on YouTube. Yeah, he's, he's a tight. grandfather of all that. He's just young as hell. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? He and jumped on right when it came on. Right when it came out. Like I remember, uh, bro. If I was number two in the nation, we talking from East Asia, Europe to mm-hmm. here, uh, and I'm number two. And he's number one. He yeah. was on some shit, bro. Soldier Boy was it? Soldier Boy was number one with his name on there. I was cheating. I used Fifty Cent name. Yeah, yeah. I took his ass off there, boy. And I shot down to ninety real quick. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, "Damn, what happened, man? Let's go back to cheating. I'm gonna yeah. go back to cheating. That that is what we would call today clickbait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was click. I was clickbaiting back then, but it worked. It yeah, wasn't you no didn't rule. even know what you were doing, but you were doing it. Hey, y'all, ain't no rules in this game. Mm-mm. Nobody ever got rich being honest. Yeah, I try to do that with my podcast. I'll put like a little clickbaity, uh, like um, what is it? The the thing. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean not crazy. Like yeah. I, I don't really do it crazy. Right. But like one time I had this dude on. Um, he he stabbed his wife's white rapist, and I was thinking about putting like a crazy like this guy stabbed his wife's rapist, but I didn't do it. I just put like a little like uh like a little you know. <laughs> Man, I remember this dude. I remember this dude on the east side named Skid. So big, heavy set fella, big old nigga, homie. Uh, real ugly, homie. He go around beating up everybody black in the black community. You know, beating up right. everybody. Everybody was scared of him. He went to fight because he was ugly. You know, one of them type of niggas. You know, he uh he one of them cats. You can kick a couple, kick a, kick him a couple dollars. He go break your ribs, punch you up, take you in the room, choke you out. Big old nigga, homie. Yeah. yeah, I remember me and that nigga got into it one time because I tried to get that nigga a job at Taco Bell. But uh, you tried I didn't to get know. him a job and he tried to beat you up? Yeah, no, listen, homie, listen, listen. It was a job for teenagers, though. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like, it was nothing but teenagers working there. And I didn't know the nigga had a, uh, a molestation in case. So he oh, thought it was funny. Shit. He thought I thought it was funny. He like, hey, nigga, you try to give me a job knowing that I got that case and then, and then they told me I don't want you nowhere near our premises ever again. Don't mm-hmm. ever come back. We got we got teenagers working here. And he said, you, I said, man, bro, I didn't know you had a case, my nigga. Yeah. He got all mad, got nose to nose, tried to do the, you know, shit with me. 
And bro, like, bro, you're the one that fucked everything <laughs> hey, listen, up, bro. I listen, I said, hey, bro, up. I tried to help you. When I said that, that nigga pushed me, bro, and yeah. I flew. Boom, I landed yeah. on my ass. I said, man, I can't beat this big old nigga. I can't whoop this big old nigga, man. That's you know, crazy. his name skits on the east side. I can't whoop this nigga. Nah. But what's in me, you know, I, I got to be who I am. Boy, I ran back at that dude. That dude was about to swing a punch that was going to probably knock my teeth out everything, bro. But I, I dodged it with the faith of God, bro. And I don't know where it was. I had something. I don't know where it came from. But I grabbed it, and I cracked that boy. And Damn. I broke all this. He ran off like a raging bull, That's bro. That's like a David hey, and Goliath hey, listen, story. Listen, he came back, and there was blood everywhere. Damn. I said, hey, hey, homie. Come get your cousin, man. Hey, come get Skizzle, bro. Didn't nobody do nothing. That boy came back running. I took off running, bro. Mm. And I and I and the, yeah, he ain't them niggas ain't seen me since. Yeah. Boy, I was glad he died. Yeah, that's I was good. glad he died. You know yeah. how he died? See, he was beating on his woman, so when he passed out, oh, he sleep, died. Yeah, I'm glad he died, homie. What happened? Yeah, Tell yeah, because yeah, he was beating on his woman, so when he went to sleep, she stabbed him in the chest. Oh shit! Yeah, he died on the spot. Homie. Yeah, he had the evil spirits. Yeah, that's a, um, that's, beating on everybody. You know, that's a story in the Bible. That exact thing. It's called David and Goliath. Yeah. Little David, it was like the youngest son. Yeah, he hit he him went with the stone. He, he went and hit him with the, with the slingshot stone. And he was a singer. Or he was like a musician. You know that? Uh, you know. No, I didn't know that. But he was you a know, musician that's too. the angel of death. I mean, uh, the, the, the devil is the angel of music. Mm. Hold on, hold on. What's going on, y'all? You got something? Hey, let me take a, let's take a little break real quick, okay? Okay, okay, for sure. I'll use the bathroom real quick. All right, for sure. Yeah. All right, we're back from break. Okay, so earlier when we were talking, and we talked a little bit about, you know, um, I don't know, Kanye, P. Diddy, and that kind of stuff like mm -hmm. that, I was thinking, are they coming for Jay-Z next, you think? Just because I, I said, I, hold on, I asked that because... I see that sometimes when you get too big, yeah, they could probably, they all probably did something bad, but sometimes they let it go until one day they can come and they just take everything away from you. Well, who they doing? Who who are they doing that to that doesn't look black? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Do you know? Can yeah. you name a person? Nobody. Elon they Musk. They don't. They never took his shit. Uh, you know, Garth Brooks just got accused of some shit. Though. Garth they, Brooks. He the biggest singer in the world. Oh, he's like the he's a white dude though, right? He's one of the biggest singers in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. not Country. just America. Yeah, the world. Yeah. So when Nobody's you get too talking big, talking about him. Do you feel like when you get too big, they come they come find something? Because look, I, I can give you examples. You know, um, Kanye, Diddy, um, Michael, Michael Jackson, Prince. Yeah, everybody, dude. Everybody but Elvis. Yeah, yeah and he Elvis up. got he was all fucked up too. Well, you know? they, we don't know they, who they, Elvis. Elvis got to die out in old age. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't go old as my grandfather, but he made it. He made it yeah, past Tupac, all the Biggie, and, and all them. Yeah, yeah. Like these he died in his forties. Uh, he was he was married to a fourteen year old baby. Mm. He, that man fucked the baby. He slept with a baby. Mm. He did. And then and they never caught. Like who who who, who are we talking about? Lisa Marie Presley's mother it um, was a baby. He was oh, that you mean man. Elvis, Elvis. Elvis was yeah. what, 26, 30? Yeah, yeah. And that girl was 14 years old. And everybody watched it. Class. But they don't put that shit on the news. It's a proven fact. It's though. like when it's, they when when it's what, a black dude, it's all over everywhere. Hey, hey homie, that wasn't a secret when it happened. That's crazy. It was it, that was the talk of it. She oh, was 14 was years old. Yeah. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Yeah, I don't. But the thing that was before my time, so I don't really. It was listen, homie. Back then, it was okay uh, to sleep with a fourteen year old. Oh, okay, yeah. It was. It was. That's it was. Crazy. It was taboo. Mm -hmm. But people did it. People that did shit it. Was crazy. People did it all the time. Look at Hollywood, man. When you look back at the photos, homie, these mm -hmm. niggas was clearly older than these women. Yeah, it's been going on. Plus, it's no different than when I was fourteen. Thugging, but I I didn't have a car like a big homie did. Mm -hmm. I couldn't buy cigarettes, but big homie could. I couldn't get the alcohol, but big homie could. So he was always fucking the girls our age. Mm. That's common, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it, 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 it happened more than we like to admit it, and yeah, we don't sure. like to really admit it, but it happened. Yeah, for sure. I've seen you, it. I've seen the dudes that graduated go back to the high school the next year. 
man. Come Take on. Take a look for a girl. Come on. That, that's backwards. Yeah, yeah. We be 24 with the 14-year-old. I, I yeah. couldn't do that. Oh, he's like me an older woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like me an older woman, man. It's something about that. But, but what do you think? Okay, but what do you think? How come, how come the white people can get, can get around the media, but as soon as one black dude... I'm not just saying P. Diddy because he's kind of a, he did a lot, but like, you know, just Kanye, let's say Kanye. Yeah, he said something about Jewish people. They took all his billion. He's went from a billionaire to like a millionaire. Yeah, like single million. They turned the power off. What like is that stage, stage homie? Why did it's, they hit you guys so bad and then let the white people ride? It's not that. The white folks playing their game. You want every now and, now and then they'll have a Tupac, a Kanye. Nigga playing that. You asked me about Jay Z earlier. Would they get yeah. Jay Z? No, because he's playing their game. Oh, okay. and he married. Why would they get him? Okay, so uh, he's he's going along with their bullshit. They came after Kanye after he was divorced, losing his mind. He was going through problems. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Uh, Talking shit but about at people. the same time. This is their stage. If the Jews run the entertain the entertainment, y'all. If y'all want to rap and you want to drill and you want to get signed, the gays and the Jews run this. This mm-hmm. day stage, this day platform. Mm-hmm. Why would I let you get on my platform and bash me? Okay. Why so, would I let you do that? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Uh, no, no, they'll shut you down. Yeah. Uh, uh, you now listen. You can kill everybody black. You can promote killing black people. You can promote uh, uh, no faithfulness, uh, cheating, the destruction of your community. But the minute you talk about their gay boys, mm. you talk about their dogs, their cats, nigga, you touch a bird, they gonna put your ass in the ground. Yeah, especially if you talk about Jewish, because the Jewish Homie, people, you better not, you yeah, better they, know they because, own everything. The people at the top are Jewish. It's they, it's they shit. So, so no, nah, nigga, nigga, stick to rapping. Uh, stick to uh, stick to yes, yeah, leave them gay folks alone. Leave yeah. them Jewish people. Well, you gotta find, you gotta uh, follow their follow the. Follow the line. There's a saying in prison: when you get out, you gotta walk that line. If you walk out the line, you're gonna be you're on probation. If you walk off the line, you'll be right back in here. So when you get out, you gotta walk that line. You do gotta walk that line. There's a uh, there's a joke in the industry that no nobody really know unless you've been in the industry, right? Uh, what would artists do if they realize that they own distribution? Mm, that they own their distribution. They, they, we we own the distribution. If we stop going through, oh the yeah, of course, they can't distribute. Yeah, because you can't. If you don't buy it, no one. Yeah. So the joke is, this is just a joke. It's like we will have to kill them. Mm. That's the joke. Oh shit, we'll have to kill them if, if they, they knew. If they buy, if they stop buying them, we'll have to kill if, them. If they knew, you feel me? So yeah. it's like it's it's another thing. Uh, That's crazy. Like a, That's a sick joke. Like like I tried to get a uh, a manager one time and. He told a joke, but it scared me. He said, man, man, I'm tired of artists taking 80% of my money. Mm. Ah. <laughs> That's crazy. Huh? Like what? 80% of your money? And I'm out here on the stage, yeah, sweating, yeah. toes bleeding. Yeah, and they probably got like 10 artists. They're getting all this percentage from a whole bunch of people Come on, for bro. not doing nothing. It's a, it's a shady business, that happens, man. man. It's a shady business. Uh. They can cut the lights off, but they they won't do their own like that. And I'm not sitting here being like it's a racial issue. It's just you can't you can't break their rules, bro. Mm-hmm. And once I realize it's a rule based system, yeah, 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 I don't I'll do it my way. I'd rather have no uh, system behind me where I can make all my decisions. Yeah. And still live with my peace. Why you think them niggas be having forty million, sixty million, and jumping off a building? Standing in front of the railroad tracks. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you had it all. Why you do that? Yeah, yeah. Because it don't, the demons don't go away. Yeah, homie. yeah. Money, and the thing is, money, money doesn't bring you happiness. I, cause like, I, I, I don't, I'm not rich, but I got a business and I get, I make money every day, but mm-hmm. you know what makes me more happy is doing this podcast, chilling, right. coming, you love to a do. conversation, yeah. learning, helping people grow, mm-hmm. trying to inspire people, become a, like, becoming a better person. Because money, to me, I use it as a tool for the things that I need, yeah. but I don't let it control my whole life. When I got yeah. out of prison, I started a cleaning business. Yeah. And then I clean houses. Me, my mom, my dad, my brother. It's like a family-owned business. Money, uh, I seen the things money will do to people, bro. I seen how uh, 
a nigga kill his best friend because he love money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A man to sleep with another man. Not <laughs> not because he like man, because he love the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some crazy you know shit. The craziest things you would go through, uh, a, a woman to have her child rob her baby daddy mm -hmm. for the money. Yeah, I just seen on social yeah. media, this girl, she wanted to take her kids to the fair. So she hit up this dude that's been in her DMs for years and she's like, hey, yeah, I'll go on a date with you, but we got to go to the fair with my kids. Nah. And then they all went to the fair with the kids. And then when he got home, he was messaging her. He's like, stop messaging me. I think you're ugly. I just use you to pay for my kids to the fair. I was like, damn, and I've seen that on TikTok, bro. Shout out to her, baby. Yeah. I love when a woman get one up on a nigga, on a That's sucker. That's crazy. Because look, this the thing. Who you said that was? That was some random oh, girl yeah, he TikTok. was a sucker. She knew he was a yeah. sucker. He had to been a sucker. If, if that happened to you, homie, it was supposed to happen to you, man. Yeah. Uh, women, that's what women supposed to do. They supposed to run game on you, and then I come. I'm the one to beat it up. She can't do that to yeah, me. Yeah. See, the thing is, <laughs> a woman could get a woman can get further with her skirt up than we can with our pants. Now, homie, mm, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, some yeah. of these women got to lay on their back to get on their feet. <laughs> so you got to do what you got to do out here. It's a cruel, cold yeah. world. So if my listen, I want my sister to do it. I want my daughter hey, to do it. Hey, they was bashing her though because she the, put it on the hey, internet. Hey, hey, I want my daughter to do it. If she can find her one of them basketball playing ass tricks yeah, that, yeah. and got make three thirty forty million a year, and she can get what two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in child support a year. Hell yeah, go do that. Yeah. Hell yeah, I want my mama to do it. <laughs> I've been trying to get everybody in my in my family, the females, to do it to move up. Like it's like it's like getting like marriaging up. People people tell. That happens in every family, dude. Moms yeah. are like, marry, make sure you marry a doctor. Yeah. Make sure you marry well, a lawyer. Well, in the black so family, like well, you know how in the black family it go. Yeah, my auntie killed three of her husbands. Mm -hmm. See, in the black family, you a black woman go get a life insurance on your ass. Yeah. And then kick the jack when you're working on the car. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, poison the Kool-Aid. Hey, shit just happened. You know what Little I mean? by little, all of a sudden, yeah. grandpa died. <laughs> hey, you know how it go? Uh, my, my, uncle's, my uncle, my uncle, uncle Albert, died. <laughs> Yeah, no, real talk. My uncle Albert was poisoned by a white woman. She put um, damn, uh, what's that blue shit you put in the car? I'm having yeah, a, friend, a and, brain and, fart. And, and the freeze, and the freeze in his yeah. food. The doctor damn. said if he wouldn't have went to sleep, he would have survived. Yeah, bro. That, my, I, but this is how God worked back on God. God spent the block on her though because she died of natural causes two years later. Yeah. My grandfather got uh, arrested six months later after the death when he went over there to shoot her, mm. and uh, damn. he got pulled over because he was drunk. Yeah, he put the gun under the seat. They didn't check it. When he came back to get his car the next day, when he got out, the gun was still there. He said that was God because he yeah. was gonna go over there and knock on the door. When she answered, Damn. he was gonna shoot her. Yeah, yeah. And My she uncle, died of natural causes. She died of natural causes that's two the, years that's, later. That's God. Bro. She didn't even go to jail for it. And the um the autopsy was poison, homie, because she was a she was a trusted teacher in um Oregon Public. Damn, that's like a yeah. Bible, dude. These stories you be telling me, they remind me of Bible stories. Look, that same dude, Dave, right, with mm -hmm. Goliath, Dave and the Goliath, mm -hmm. he became the king of Israel. But one day, he seen Bathsheba taking a shower across the street, mm -hmm. and that was the, uh, one of his soldiers' wives. So he he said, come, they, they, the guards went and got her. He slept with Bathsheba, but he got her pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. And then he felt bad, so he tried to get the soldier to come back. And and sleep with his wife so he can think that he, so he can think that that he was pregnant. Oh yeah. So the so the soldier told uh, David. He said, uh, "I can't do that. I'm at war with the guys. I can't come home and eat and, and sleep with my wife. That's not right." Because David asked for him to have like a relief, right? Yeah. To to relief from it. And um and then uh, David uh, the dude said no, right? Mm -hmm. So then. David said, "Okay, put him up front in the in the war, and they and he killed him. Yeah. So this is what happened. God said, God flipped it on him when they had the baby. The baby died in seven days. Wow, wow, yeah. You know, uh, sometimes you do bad things. That, that was David. bad things come. Yeah, David. Well, see, that's that's the part of the story they don't tell you. Yeah, uh, David did an old war tactic that they did to a lot of the blacks in uh World War Two and World War One. They used mm. to put the uh the blacks in the front. Okay. Let them take all the bullets. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. everybody else, you know, whatever was left, they they try to fend for themselves after that. Yeah, dude, they've been that, doing black people bad that, for years. Bro. Well, you know, uh, 
You the know, whole prison point, system. At this point, we doing ourselves bad, though. Bro. Yeah, I know. But listen to this. At one point, right, they stopped slavery, right? Mm-hmm. But they're like, but if you go to jail, Thirteenth Amendment. If you go to yeah, if you go to jail, we can pay them like nine cents an hour, mm-hmm. and they'll be our slaves. It'd be for, legal slavery. So then they what they started doing is putting all of our not black either mm-hmm. brown black. You know what I mean? All of us, like you know. Yeah, but they started that right after Latinos. Emancipation Proclamation. Like as soon as they freed the slaves, they said, "Hey, now you can go." Mm-hmm. They was locking them niggas up for walking around barefooted, stealing coats, and giving yeah. these boys like 10, 15 years. Dude, I worked in the, so, I worked in prison for fourteen cents an hour the whole time I was there, and the, the whole time I'm like, "This is like slavery, bro." I was getting like fourteen dollars a month, man. I, I'm I'm thankful I've never been to prison, don't want to go, don't need to but go. But you've been in jail a bunch of times, A dude. bunch of times. When you were younger, you always used to get in trouble and stuff like that? Yeah. 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 I used to, uh, my friends used to be good at stealing. I used to get caught. <laughs> she, hey, man. Yeah. Uh, it just wasn't you. It just wasn't me, man. Yeah. Uh, I was raised different. Uh, th- they, was, they was good at everything that I wasn't good at. I mm-hmm. had to learn to be good at. Mm-hmm. Then, like... It's reverse now. The the business in the corporate world that I'm good at, yeah, I have yeah. to teach them how to do it. Um, yeah, of course. My homeboy was uh he lost his job a month and a half ago. I said, Why you ain't filing employment? Bro, I don't know how to do that shit. I said, Bro, I, I had to go over there and show him. Now he's yeah. getting his little money every week. <laughs> he happy. He's like, Bro, you know a nigga like me from the mud ain't never got no un- unemployment, bro. <laughs> but it's like Bro, it's not that hard if you just go try to get it. Yeah, you've been working for a minute. If they, if as long as you work for a certain amount of weeks, Mm -hmm. you're old unemployment. Yeah, man. uh, Most people don't know that, huh? People don't know that. You got to know things. The brain is a terrible thing to waste. uh, Yeah, of course. Because I don't want to. I refuse to be a street nigga that been in the street 21 years and ain't got 2100 in the bank. Yeah, that's a lot it. of these dudes don't even got that homie. Yeah, they can't do nothing. They live in check to hey, check. Hey, so now that now okay, so you still you, earlier you said you know you do a lot of videos, mm-hmm. but you still put out your albums and all that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what's this album called that you're putting out right now? Well, I, got, I mean, I'm, it's already out, right? Yeah, no feelings right now. It's me and uh, Dizzy folks. We made a a collaborated project. It you know uh, me and T Dime did Bangers and Bars two mm-hmm. years ago, and that was a classic. So we just wanted to make another one okay. with a uh with a good approach and uh we wanted to really key on emotion. Mm-hmm. We wanted to capture feeling. So so soon as it drops, I mean, give it thirty seconds, you'll feel the emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Jamie Foxx on there talking. We got Morgan Freeman mm-hmm. <laughs> talking. Uh, yeah, man, we got we got we got a good album, man. Yeah. It's a good album. That's dope. And then uh, where can they? What's the name of it? And where can they find it? Uh, no feelings. It's on iTunes. It's on everywhere you can find music right now. You can literally put it on your story on um any social media site okay. that you got too. Okay. You know what I mean? Young Chuck, why you in G though? Play yeah. any one of my songs, man. It it go to the cause. I think it's two cents a, a play. So yeah, y'all run that up. Yeah, for sure. Need that. Yeah. And then okay, and then so you but you and Boom Click are still doing things. You guys yeah. are still uh, do you guys do any shows lately or anything? Uh, we've been trying to slow down on the local shows, but we 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 do them if the if if it's appropriate. Yeah, you know we've been doing it so long here. We've been just trying to try other markets. Like I did my birthday party in Cleveland. Okay, you know, st- just wanted to switch it up, have a yeah. private location, uh, see who really mess with me, and we'll pull up. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That was that was nice. Yeah, because you had some artists there. Yeah, it looked cool. Like. Um, I seen I seen it all on, on on social media and your social media you're you're real good on social media you're always posting you mm-hmm. keep your page alive well mm-hmm. everyone I mean people comment like share so yeah. I be watching your stuff you're real relevant you Appreciate stay it. with topics that um you know that resonate for all of us mm-hmm. and they might be funny sad funny like you know what Serious, I mean? It makes you offensive. mad. It yeah. might be all different kinds of stuff, but it's entertaining. Yes, sir. It's dope. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that what you're doing. Some of the stuff, you know, is a little raunchy for my taste, yeah. but I still, I yeah, still I read do that it for the young see mother, it. for that, the young people. That that's that's what you got to do to stay relevant mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. You, I, I like how you play the game. You you try to make sure you do everything the right way. You're mm-hmm. real presentable, mm-hmm. and you know exactly what you're doing, man. Yeah, how did sure. how did you even like come up with all of that? Or how long have you been doing that social media game? 
Uh, since MySpace, man, since Fifty mm. Cent in the club yeah. when I posted that, I that taught me there ain't no there ain't no shortcuts in this game, but there ain't no rules either. Mm. So uh, and then my peers, I I was like one of the first. I was the youngest artist from Toledo, Ohio, to get nominated for an Ohio Hip Hop Award back when those rewards mattered. Mm. Uh, so I seen the ins and outs of this game. Yeah. I've had uh, T Page, Sir Major, he just got locked up for the Greater Atlanta Black Lives Matter. It was a, I guess it was just a page that he posted, but he got locked up for the funding. Mm. Uh, he used, he was actually my first manager, bro. For real? Yeah, he did. He did a lot of he did a lot for me, man. Uh, but I realized, man, I didn't have enough money to do this. See, when I start making money and I start hitting sixty thousand, eighty thousand, oh damn, I got ninety five thousand dollars, right? I'm sitting there thinking, like, even though I had ninety bands, ninety five, almost touching a hundred, I didn't feel like I had enough. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you spend ten ten thousand, you now you're down to eighty five. That yeah. hurt when you just had ninety five. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That hurt. So uh I I start realizing, damn, I got a hundred thousand in my uh in my bank account now, mm-hmm. and that ain't no real money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it takes care of things that you need taken care of, but it ain't it ain't gonna last forever. Yeah, if you're not making more and more and more, that shit just starts dwindling down. Bro, I didn't have big money. This these hands didn't touch some real money. Mm-hmm. I count money like I got five hands. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. And then, okay, so now um, I know music costs money to make and stuff like that. But now you got that your vid- videography stuff, mm-hmm. right? Well, when I when I had uh over the pandemic, I didn't have, I didn't make so much money, and you know they was giving out loans and shit. So because of my label, I mm-hmm. I did a PPP. Yeah, yeah. Because. Yeah. You know, they, I was, I was, it's all legal, y'all. Yeah. I was, I was qualified <laughs> to do it. Yeah, yeah. So they paid us out really, really good. So I, um, I put some of that back into the music. The, the music. Well, of course, it had to go to the music because if yeah, it, it didn't, to. they'd trace it back. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I did it for Same filmography. thing with me, dude. Like, I have a business called Toledo's Best Cleaning mm-hmm. and we didn't stop cleaning, no. but we got, we took advantage of the PPP oh, loan yeah. and my business got a loan. And then that loan, I have to pay it back whenever. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, little by little, whatever. Like, I don't know. What, like 11 years or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't like even know. crazy. They take it out or something. Because we did it all legit. Mm-hmm. The right way through a lawyer. Just like you did. Mm-hmm. So it's no big deal. I, I know people that did it were for bigger businesses. Yeah. It's like a well, employee protection program. Well, you know, they put all that money on a card. Yeah. So, yeah, they can. Stay. I think they can trace you, bro. They, yeah, they, they know follow, everything. Which, yeah, it's a paper trail with that card. Yeah, so yeah. we did we did legit shit with it. We went um got new microphones, got new everything, uh big camera, big boy lights, all that stuff. Yeah, you know. So as long as for the business, it's all mm-hmm. good. And then the money came back, man, dude. Listen, uh, in, uh investing what we probably invested fifteen thousand total on just the camera stuff. Mm-hmm. That's but smart, bro. We oh, it was a hurtful. Some people went and went to Florida and bought a car. Man, it was a you hurtful decision. People from my block would have blew it on weed. And That's what I'm saying. They bought some Jordans and some, some Jordans, weed. You know? <laughs> and then that shit's gone and you're like, at least you got cameras. Yeah, and cameras can make you money day. forever, bro. Yeah. Yeah, no. And that's exactly what it did. We actually, the first year, I think I made 40, but that second year, bro, I made $63,000. Yeah. I thought that was, a, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've spent 60 on music. Mm-hmm. I never made. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, this is an exposure game until you get that check. And even when you get that check, you got to wait on sponsors. Big boy shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just to get the real money. Yeah, uh, yeah. M- rap opens doors. The opportunities are the doors. That's where the money comes mm-hmm. from. That's why you see a nigga like Rick Ross. He might not go platinum every time, but he's he look like he the biggest boss. Yeah, Because yeah. of the deals he's doing outside of rap. Rap is just a, it's the vehicle to get you there. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah. I and I believe that one hundred percent. Yeah. So that 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 so I cashed out all my rap friends to shoot videos for. Them. Yeah. And uh, so that's how you make money because you you every every couple of days or whatever every day you make a video for somebody and that brings you the money to make your music available. For- yeah, well, not, not only that, just to take care of the family. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I keep was just money saying in the bank account. You know, course, what I mean, it's, of it's, course, it's really hazard money. Because I, I got another thing going in other yeah, places, yeah, yeah. making other money. So when I'm free enough to do this, it's something I like to do. 
and I get paid for doing it. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what I was just saying, like, if you want to sp- spend a little bit something on something extra, right. like, a, like you know, but now you don't even have to pay for videos. You make it, you and your boys make your own videos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, if you got a video, yeah, yeah you don't have if to If we want to switch up the look or we going for a certain look, we'll let a professional come in and handle oh, okay, it. Okay. Yeah. Just but if it's, if it's, if it's something I can handle, I'll do it. Yeah. I like yeah. that little uh, video story where you guys have that microphone with hanging. The, with the water, the aquafina. Oh, that shit was fire, dude. <laughs> it was like one of these hanging. Yeah, yeah. And it started like, what are them guys doing over there? Right, right. And then you go into like that super nice cut. You see what I said on there? No risk, no reward. Yeah, that's fire. You know fire. what I mean? You can't worry about yeah. what they saying over there. And they saying over there, you just got to go do what you... Yeah. People can't see your dream. It's your dream. Yes, sir. You got to make them see it. By that's, the time they see it, you're going to be on another dream. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I feel about this like nobody knows like how many hours I put a lot of hours into oh, my podcast dude I can see them like I, I spent a lot of money I've created like a lot of things like so like most people are like ah right, what is what does that do because especially people that know you right like from the neighborhood and stuff mm-hmm. like man who cares but them really the ones, them the ones that don't appreciate you as yeah. much as I do yeah, no. You know, I, I'm blessed, thankful, and happy to be here. Yeah. You know, they probably I be appreciate like, oh, that's Yogi, man. Yeah. Like, man, Yogi, like man. Yogi, man. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's crazy. Nah, bro, you you going to always get the most love from strangers. Yeah, man, it's weird. That's like when you go to it Cleveland. I'm like, what up, young Chuck? Yeah. But here until they're like, oh, that's young. But, they, but still, you're old, you're a legend. And uh, every time I see like a top 10 Toledo list or something, like you're always on it. I'll be thankful for that. Sometimes yeah, they forget about Yeah, I see your name me. on all them lists all the time. I remember one motherfucker told me, I mean, one guy was like, well, Chuck, you know you've been you've been you didn't you didn't made it a long time ago, bro. So we ain't gonna put you on there. We ain't talking yeah. about you. So I was just like, oh man, you want to take me? Yeah, but know. when you talk about the best in Toledo, I mean, yeah. there's only like you know what I'm saying. It, I mean, there's a lot of rappers, but the best yeah. or with even with longevity, yeah. you're on it. You know what oh, I'm saying? As far as longevity, I'm in the Mount. You might be the number one of like yeah. longevity. Oh, I mean, you know, Magic Juan and mm-hmm. and you know people like that. It's but, really me and Juan yeah, and Clemmy. Like, Shit, we might be the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, like the top Me, three. Me, Juan, and Clammy, man. How it come to this? Yeah. Shout out to Philly P. He in Atlanta still doing his thing, but I'm trying to think. Yeah, Who? but we're still here, still doing it. You know what I'm saying? With the good social media and shit. Because like Magic Juan got some good social media too. Like For sure, he, Juan do. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He the GOAT. Because uh, you got to keep that going if you want to stay relevant. Juan is outstanding, I think. Yeah. I'm about to shoot a video for him. I want to do... I want to do... Uh, Pretty soon, hopefully, uh, after this one, he can he'll reach out to me. I have talked to him about it. He gonna come on here and talk that shit. Too. Yeah, he, he got more of a player, you know. He's been around. Huh? Yeah, he got some stories, man. I got some stories too, but that brother got some yeah. stories, man. <laughs> you know, he yeah. was my mentor in the beginning. Yeah, you know, I learned game from him. And he was like radio, did all kinds of did stuff. Did it all, bro. Did it, did it, did everything I did after. Mm. You know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, when they he shout has, like, my the name blue. out on the radio, I think it's right after his or before his. Man, that's a blessing, man. Mm. Yeah, that's dope. That's but he, fire. but you know, he told me when I, I don't know if he even remember this though. But he, he told me one day, man, when I was at his house, he's like, Chuck, I don't know what it is about you, but I, I can tell you gonna be a star, bro. Mm-hmm. You got like star quality. Yeah, niggas that's do dope. know you, bro. Yeah, and that's good to hear that sometimes that. it's really inspiring. Yeah. Even earlier when you told me like, yeah, I want to, f- yeah, I was coming out here, Yogi, yeah. like you the Shannon Sharp run or like something like that. I was like, <laughs> damn, that that makes me yeah. uh, feel inspired. Just like when he told you, you know what I'm saying? There's something about you that's yeah. like, oh man, at least somebody sees it. Because yeah. a lot of our peoples don't see it or they just like don't even want to see it or whatever. So there's good for strangers or people that you know, just they don't know you like... In and out, you know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. So they just they see who you are, like mm-hmm. just just like like today we just meet each other, right? Mm-hmm. Boom! Like I, I I can talk here all day. I don't care. Yeah. And like, cause it's it just comes so natural. It's right. a great conversation. Mm-hmm. Some people you meet, you're like, ah, my god, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like a a, a thing about this whole like interaction. You as a person like are easy to talk to. You got great stories. The the whole conversation comes natural. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's not a vibe everyone, too. Not yeah. everyone's like that. So this is a um. So my podcast. It's um. This is not 
one time, I'm never going to see you again. Right. No, I want to create a relationship where you come in a few months, maybe you bring in, you know, or you send one of your friends, mm -hmm. like from Boom Click, and we yeah. get some of their stories. Yeah. And absolutely. we kind of like have a relationship. So, like, when the day you do get a new business, you be like, hey, Yogi, uh, put me on the schedule. Right. You know, well, I want to talk about this and that. And we mm -hmm. create like a bond where we keep going. Because your life is going to keep going. My life is going to keep going. Right. In a year, you're going to have all this other new stuff. And then we don't got to go back and say, hey, tell me about when you were young. No, we can just be like, what up? Tell me. Yeah, what up? What up, on young now, Chuck? homie? Yeah. yeah. I love and it. And we can have a conversation because I'm going to do this every week for the rest of my life. And I, and if I can ever find more people to work for me, mm -hmm. then eventually I'll do a podcast every couple of days. Hey, man, we got to tap in, homie, because uh, I, I, I want to contribute to whatever you got going on. If I can send some people in your direction that can maybe contribute or help. Yeah, because so. we can help each other grow because yeah. now this is a win-win for both of us, for right? Sure. A couple of my people see you, a couple, you know what I'm saying? Your people mm -hmm. see me and we both have a, a, a great, uh, grow our Report. social media mm -hmm. and then we we have a friendship too because right. I don't want it to be like, oh, what up? What up? No, like you can, you can message me, be like, Yogi, you know what I'm saying? I got this show coming up. Mm -hmm. It's like two weeks or three weeks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let, let me and my homies. For me, big homie. Yeah. Same, vice versa. Yeah. Though. Or we can, come, we can come on here and talk about it and, you, get it and get it to go. You know what I'm saying? Bro, if you advertising something, just tell me, bro. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll repost it. I'll yeah, try no, to repost I, most of your shit I, anyway. I want to I wanna do it where we make a uh, podcast about it so we can actually, or even, you know what I'm saying? I go... At, I go and do like a live show at your performance. Right. You know what I'm saying? Something mm -hmm. like that. So we can have like a bond and like interact with each other because we could both grow if we if I do. I try to tell this to everybody too right. so I can keep growing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, so can you... Um, I respect we, that. We've been talking for a long time, you know what I'm saying? This yeah, is a conversation. So I, what yeah, I was I getting hear the dog barking. What I, what I was getting at is this is a, com this is a conversation that's going to go on for the future, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. This ain't just one time deal. And not we'll only have, that, bro, we immortalized together in this yeah. right now, bro. My kids gonna see this long after I'm gone. Oh yeah, yeah, for you sure. You know, this one of those. Yeah. Um. Can you tell them again your social media and where they can find in your album and all that stuff, real quick? Y Young Chuck One. Uh. Y U N G. Young Chuck. Young Chuck One. Uh. I'm the handsome little fella, the light skin, brown eyes, by <laughs> mine, too hot for you to touch me. Yeah, it's Mr. Chucky. Uh, fly like the heavens be. Haters hate smelling me because Kang, they would never be. But no, no, I, I got off track, y'all. But uh, yeah, so on YouTube, anywhere music is sold and you can stream it, it's Young Chuck. All my albums will pop up. Okay. There you go. And the last song was Oh, the, what's I got a name? reality show called True Reality, and I've been doing it for 11 seasons, y'all. So yeah, go check that out. Where's man. that at? It's on YouTube. On YouTube? Okay. I've been doing this like. Back in the day, you used to have to show what you rap about. Yeah. Little did I know I was kind of indicting myself, but yeah, we got yeah. we got a dope reality show out there. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty All good. Right, that's, that's fire. I didn't even know about that. All right, yes. so um, thank you for, so much for uh, sitting down with me and having appreciate this great it, conversation. It's a, it's a pleasure, I, I appreciate you so much. Uh, yeah, we're going to do this again. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go to his channel and subscribe. We appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much. Have faith. Show love. Give hope. All let praise go. to God. Uh, all praise to God. Let go and let... Oh, hold on. Live. No, <laughs> hold on. I always say. Hey, y'all. Blooper real. Yeah. Go ahead. Let go and let God. <laughs> I love it. Boom. Yeah. That's all I say is boom. <laughs>